Ladies and gentlemen. I knew Jordan was going to be good, but Jordan looks really fucking good. Jordan Hutchinson. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I knew he was going to look that good. Just size wise, I didn't know if he was going to be that big. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, I knew he was going to look good, but by that good, I mean, I didn't know he was that big either. It's like, fuck, big dude. Like, like standing next uh. to Stu. Uh -huh. That's what made it more prevalent to me. I was like, "Holy shit!" People forget, though. I mean, he came, he came, he came fourth at Texas Pro. Man, that was not an easy lineup. He beat Lewis Breed and, and a couple of good guys at Texas Pro in his pro yeah, debut. Right. So, he came was not fifth, a, but he was, he was fourth at prejudging and then I think fifth at finals or no, Lewis, Lewis Breed. Lewis Breed beat him, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But regardless, Dude, he's, that was a hell he's, of a he's no slouch, man. He's no slouch bodybuilder. He's he's really good. He's really, really good. Wait, uh, so, so Jordan placed uh fifth that show? Let me see if I can share it. Yeah. Texas Pro, yeah. Well, Why can I pull up this guest, bro? I, I, I just saw was, it on my story. That was uh, Andrew. Who was there? Andrew, Hunter. Carlos. Uh, oh, yeah, Carlos. He, and Carlos placed third. Then uh, fourth, fifth, yeah. That was a good joke. Do they have one that's not sideways? I think uh, Jordan Jordan has it on his post, I think, or um, I think stories. I saw it wasn't sideways. Check it out. My story, right? Yeah. Can you guys see still? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Jordan is tall then because he's taller than Stu, no? Yeah. And, and Stu is a legit 5'9, so Jordan got to be 5'10. Or he's barely taller than him, but taller. Yeah, they look like enough. about the same height. I mean, he, he had some quality muscle. He's always the sleeper, bro. When he did that USA's, nobody saw him coming because he looks off season. He kind of looks normal, man. The most of the he looks normal. Once he starts getting the, the lines, Separation, hardness, he just turns into a different person. He doesn't have that uh, pop as a bodybuilder, right? Like, you know when you see, like, me, Joe, you, you got the sh rounded shoulders. and Yeah, you know, yeah. He's just kind of bursting. When you see him, he just looks like a big guy. Yeah, um, you don't get that. You don't get that effect, but but on stage, you know. You, you get so the effect detailed. on stage. Because it's weird. Because yeah. detail, yeah. <laughs> But for some reason, that effect only happens to him on stage, right? Or like, you know, maybe like when he's really lean, pumped up in the gym. But for the most part, you don't see it till you see it. Whereas most yeah. of us, you kind of start seeing it a little faster. So some people, you even see it in off season. Yeah, like we can. I see it in off season with you. You know, I yeah. um, Joe's like that I, too. Joe's I, like yeah. rounded out in the off season, like shoulders and everything. You know. Yeah, you're right. I was just looking at, uh, so we got our camera guy back and saw me putting YouTube videos out again. And he yeah, showed back, us, or, back yeah, to we, we, he took a break for about a month trying to figure things out, like <laughs> time wise and stuff and oh, yeah, financially man. for himself. And then uh, we just got him back. So we just did a video and he sent it, he always sends it to us. We watch it, let him know if we need to cut anything out or this isn't that. So I watched it yesterday and, <clears throat> I was like, I really like how I look right now. <laughs> this is the first time in a long time where I, I looked at myself and I was like, I look like a pro bodybuilder. <laughs> I was like that. I look like I fit, fit the criteria. So I, know, I, I, know I know what you mean. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. What's up, you know, Justin? Even like, even like after USA and stuff, USA's and stuff, you know, like I, I lost that, that bodybuilder look going into yeah. like, this last off season. But this time, knowing I'm staying tighter and stuff, it's kind of like nice to know I'll look like a pro bodybuilder year round <laughs> compared yeah. to like getting soft and just like a big guy kind of thing. So, yeah, let me look good, Joe. Look good, man. Say what's up. Yeah. Let me say what's up to Justin real quick. Oh, uh, what's up, Justin? 
We yeah. got Justin O'Donnell on it. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this to happen. I'm like, I know. Yeah, this guy, uh, this guy should have been out here a long time ago. <laughs> long yeah. time ago, man. Long time ago. They you slide. You know, literally the the platform was meant for like that, right? For <laughs> all of Yo, us coming up, right? <laughs> the 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 weirdest thing is that like like we we literally been talking about it and then Blackstone hit me up like yo you should get Justin on I'm like I thought I already booked him and he's like oh check I was like oh I guess I didn't book him I, I thought we already talked and booked it but I, I guess we didn't book it right so uh it, it took Black Blackstone to get it to happen which is weird because me and him was already talking about it yeah, well, yeah. Scott got him before us you just did that interview yeah. with Scott right I did yeah, yeah, yeah so I, I watched that so I know, I know Scott from the Discord. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Justin, that, that's 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 the shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because we talked about it a while back, right? Like when we were when you cut down for head to the heavies, and we were like, "Oh, we got to get him on after that, so he could explain the story." And it never it never happened, you know. So it never came to fruition. And then we we got all these other bozos on the show before we got uh, real dude. Justin. Come on, man. <laughs> <like, bozos. laughs> <laughs> but but you know, what's the plan for? I mean, we all bozo, so it's okay. Uh, what's the plan, Justin? What's the plan for the year? We gonna act like we don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys, uh, the... you guys, you guys had Jacoby on. I, had I known, I would have just come on with him. But, you know, we live like five minutes from each other, right? But yeah. um. Yeah, the plan the plan has been nationals uh, after doing USA's last year, so it's good, you know, eighteen months or so between shows. So, I've uh, yeah. I've just been chilling for a long time. I've been like, you know, TRT chilling since February or March. You guys know how Ooh. that goes. Like you you really start to get like, come on, let's do something here. I almost yeah. wanted to do North Americans or something, but you know the longer i wait the better response i'll have i think and um i did a long prep last year i i dieted from joe i started dieting in january for usa so i was you know we you guys talked about how i was in the 280s and i got down to 220 on stage that's because i dieted for six months right um but what made so, you what what made you do uh, uh the heavies well, we we thought Anthony A Train was doing uh super. Well, we knew he was doing supers, and that's a Jansen. He was, yeah. That's a Jansen client, and I was we were looking at photos of him that Jansen was getting, and it was just like, oh my goodness. So we thought I had a better shot at heavies, and if I could, I could sacrifice a little size and suck down to it, and then fill yeah. out because I have no problem filling out usually. Um, and I, you know, I had, I had a lot of fat to lose, so mm -hmm. I was able to get down there. Yeah. I could have been maybe a, a super and duped it out with Joe, but we felt like I had a good shot in heavies and we thought I could go against Josh. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. just, the timing was a little off with the, uh, with the peak. And I think Jacoby told you some of that, it's actually kind of become some of the lore <laughs> lately because, uh, this, this thing we figured out with uh, bowel movements has become a protocol for like all of his pros now. Uh, see, see. <laughs> That's how you learn that. That's how you get better yeah. through, through, through fuck ups. I mean, you you definitely had a a, a, a good chance against uh, 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 Josh. The, J Josh looked great, but I mean, you you look you look really good up there as well. Um, A Train, man, A Train is a freak in nature, bro. He's a freak. Yeah, freak. Yeah. Uh, Why didn't he end up doing guys. it? I remember, I remember seeing him um, leading up to it, but how come he didn't end up doing it? No one knows. Let's get him on. Let's get him on. Ask sure. him. No, no, one knows. This year. no one knows. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Let's just ask him straight up on the podcast. We'll, we'll get him on. I know. I, I know he watched. We got to get Josh on too. Josh doesn't do. He don't do podcasts. Let's see, really. I've never seen him on one though. No, Josh no. Manley. He should. He's funny. He's. I yeah, think he will come on though. I think he will come on. He's. He's. He's a. He's a social guy. I think he'll come on if you ask him. He would. No. No. He. He will come on. I'm. I'm just like. I don't think I've ever seen him actually. I don't think I've seen him talk on social media ever. I've never I've seen, seen him talk. Oh, I've yeah. seen him talk yeah. on his stories. Yeah, I've seen okay. him talk on okay. his stories. Okay. I can tell. I can tell you have a good sense of humor just from like DMs and stuff though. So that'd be yeah. that'd be cool. What's up, Alyssa? What's up, boys? Getting another, another meal in. Yeah, yeah. All right. So plan is is nationals. Well, you okay? You were a heavyweight, so I, I'm assuming you were at the top of the class, like what two twenty four? I was two. 
Mm, two twenty, I think, the day of the show. Okay, okay, something, something like that. And then, obviously, like you don't want to go into a show with like a target weight or anything like that. Just your best yeah. look. But yeah. if you have to assume or or guess how much size you put on, or and how much size you're not going to lose, where where would you think you're going to be around? Yeah, so you know, preps preps are always weird, especially like I think men's open. We diet for a certain length of time, and then we get stuck at this weight, and we're stuck at this weight for weeks and weeks and weeks, and we're not knowing if we're gonna make the weight that we want. So last year I was stuck at two forty forever. From like Ooh. once I once I was at like twelve weeks out, I was just stuck there and just getting harder and looking looking better. Um, I was like, how the hell am I going to pull off 15 more pounds? I didn't know how it was going to happen. But when you get to that last week and you carb deplete and you pull water, um, stuff happens, right? So I, I suck down, but ideally I wouldn't want to do that this year. I'd like to not have to do that. And if I could just make two thir- the 230s look better and better, I, you know, Martin Fitzwater, he was 237. Um, yeah, when he yeah. when he won recently, so it just goes to show it's not so much the weight you're really chasing that look, what looks the best. Oh. So whatever looks Joe, the best. So was Joe? Was was Joe not Joe in the two thirties at the U.S. stage? No. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So well, you you checked in in the two twenties, I thought. So the the plan was to make me a heavyweight. Oh yeah. And so uh, pretty much Justin uh, told me that. He feels like we took off 10 pounds that I didn't need to take off because I just got stringier. Like, I, I was like you. I got stuck at 243 for the longest time, and I was actually getting better and better for three weeks straight. And then we started pushing, it, and then I got to – It still makes you a little nervous, doesn't it? Even though if yeah. you're seeing yourself get harder, bigger, fuller at the same weight, you still get a little bit like, I kind of want that way to jump. No. Uh, for me, for me – I was uh, I was getting really good feedback on my look, and I, okay, okay. I I never really cared about the the weight. I guess it was more so like who would I who would I kind of go up against for that show? Okay, because yeah, because I, I all, all I cared about was the best look because that's what yeah. it ended up coming down to, and that's why we put me up because I, I got down to two twenty three, literally the Sunday um, before peak week. Wow. Yeah. And then that's when Justin actually messaged Damn. me. Like yeah. and he uh he was like like how how set am I mentally on being a heavyweight? Cause that's when he explained everything to me and all this. And I was like, Well, if it makes you feel better, dude, like I told Paul I didn't I didn't see where after I got down to like two thirty two, I was like, dude, like me being realistic and everything, like I don't see I was like, maybe being hard on myself three pounds, but I don't know where he's going to get the rest of Wait, this um, uh, Joe, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, when I saw you, that was like six weeks out? Five. Oh, five. I, it was five or six. It was one of those, yeah. How, mu- how much did you weigh then? Um, 235. Oh. oh. I, okay. I, really, like most bodybuilders, that look – they would pop a die as I and step on stage if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. Right? I'm telling you, that's, I would talk to Paul. I'm like, dude, am I just, am I tripping? Am I seeing myself the way I, I actually look? Cause I'm like, I don't know where he's going to pull this off. Like, like uh, I trusted Justin, but it was more like, fuck what's going to happen when you take this weight off me. And I pretty much lost my legs. Like not, not to the point where it was like devastating, but I definitely the, lost the- size of my legs. There was a difference. And uh, that's what he was like, fuck, dude, like all all that's happening, you're not getting any more condition, you're just stringing out. And so he was afraid that if I went in that I would be so far gone that I wouldn't be able to fill out, which is why last minute, literally that Sunday after the conversation, we started feeding me already. And so when I checked in, um, at check-ins, I was 230. And then the next morning with zero meals in me, I was 228. So it was like right there. Hmm. Well, so it, it, it's funny because it's like it wasn't like you were like ten pounds over the class, right? It it does. I mean, or you probably would have been, but it yeah. doesn't take a lot of a lot of weight to change the look drastically, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. I feel like people like people would see like uh, Lunsford. Oh, he nowadays he must be like two forty since he's so much improved. And it's like 
That first Olympia man, I gotta be honest, I don't even think he was too dirty. I think he was probably mid two twenties. Like like Martin is 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 fucking low two thirties. I really don't think Derek and Heidi and are that Martin. heavy. Um, and he's taller. Martin's taller than both yeah. of them. So and yeah. the year the first year Heidi did the open Olympia, that same year he did a two twelve show. So I, I, I assure you Heidi wasn't all of a sudden 15 pounds heavier. So yeah, the, the thing is I don't believe in sacrificing a look to make weight at all, unless it's one of those situations where if you're getting ready for the 212 Olympia, right? And you gotta pick between open guys and 212, that's a whole different ball game. Or if you know that this super is like a once in a lifetime guy, right? You're about to go against Phil Heath is doing the fucking USA's at, at the at the at the heavy. You might want to want to you might want to dodge that heavy. <laughs> Just yeah, that one yeah. So if, I think it have to be like no choice whatsoever. Because if you would have those three pounds alone, three four pounds alone, that would have made it hard for you to to beat. Josh actually, which you, I, I, obviously you beat Josh in overall, right? But just if you would have lost another half an inch on your legs, bro, I don't know, man. Yeah, it, it, that was a thing. Josh, uh, you got big ass legs. Me to Josh, I was like, well, I can see how on some shots, you know, he has a chance. Like, so I, ha I definitely had to come in fuller. Um, oh, yeah. If I would have stayed stringy and not been able to fill out, yeah, I don't believe I would have beat yeah. Josh. That's, the that's another. Moment. That's another guy that improved so much because I did nationals twenty two with Josh. I think yeah. he came tenth. He came tenth at that show, and the Josh in the USA is it wasn't the same guy. It wasn't the same guy Bro. who competed at nationals. He 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 improved a lot. I didn't. I gotta be honest. I didn't. He. I didn't even have him on the radar because I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't follow. I followed him, but I didn't notice the improvements till I saw him there. I was like, wait, that's Josh because he he had worked with Compton. Like a year, like somewhere, right at some point, right. So I would see him on yeah. Compton, but then I saw it. I was like, "Wait, that's Josh." I, I I didn't see him as somebody that was about to get his pro card that soon, you know. And then yeah, I saw him. I'm like, "Oh, he's getting, he's getting his pro card." Because yeah, when it came when, down to it, oh, so mm -hmm. Yeah, Nationals when I uh, the Bible Without Borders list came out and they they put all of us because you know it is you don't really know who's who till that list comes out, right? And I saw him. I was like, "Ah, uh, you know, size wise." Even for heavens, I don't think he'll – there were too many big guys in that heavy class. Debs was there, Sid, all these guys. So, I'm like, no, nah, he probably won't be there. And, and then I saw him at USA's, and I was like, wow, like he actually sized up. Like he was one of the bigger heavies in the USA's, which was so think, impressive. I didn't yeah. think he was that big till he stepped on the stage. I thought his legs yeah. were big. I, no, no shit, right? I, I thought yeah. he had big legs, but I thought he had a small upper body. I thought his upper body yeah. was like really behind. Because it probably was uh, like at some point, and then I saw him. I was like, "Okay, his legs are even bigger, but his upper body is like looks looks in balance. You know, I, it didn't look yeah. weak at all." So I was like, "Oh, there he goes." You know, same with Zay. the same thing happened with Zay. Legs are still big, but uh, you know. So I thought that was uh, I thought that was fun. Yeah, like, when I when I went into USA's, I I was literally only looking at Josh and Justin. All of these guys, these are the guys that are going to give me a run for my money. For, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah well, no, because I, I mean, regardless, one of them was going to win the heavies, or if I stayed a heavy, I was going to go against them, or if I won uh, super heavies, I was going against one of them for the overall. So regardless, yeah, yeah. in my head, I was going to go against them. Definitely. So, um, and then when I look at pictures and stuff of, like, me and Josh, the only reason I pulled it off against Josh was, one, my posing, and then, two – um because his quads were so much better than mine but the side of my leg and my side shots yeah, yeah. and my back detail and then my width like on uh in my shoulders like that's the only reason i got away with beating josh yeah because it's gonna be every it's gonna be everything you know yeah it's gonna be everything he's also, I remember he's also, he's also a bit smaller frame joe you have to yeah, that's why it was my my frame and side shots yeah because yeah. yeah. exactly. my legs my legs did not compare to josh's like at all yeah. So, well, well uh, from the front. From the but front, from, yeah, from the front. That's why the sides really help me. Yeah, yeah. That thing, bodybuilding, you gotta, you gotta have it uh, everywhere because because Zade was locked in. Zade wanted to win the whole thing, and he's like, "What do you think?" From I'm, I'm like, honestly, from the front, bro. Shit, you you right there because his legs are fucking huge. His waist is tiny. Yeah. You know, I'm like from the back is where uh, most, most uh, people uh, most people will beat me from the front. Yeah, most people will beat me from the front. But don't don't, don't say yourself that's true. 
No, no, I a mean lot, like I build up, of, like as yeah, as I build up my quads and stuff. Good shape people build outward, yeah. yeah, yeah. But better shaped people than me, like like uh, like uh, Brett, who you're gonna go against, like yeah. someone like that sh will always beat me from the front. So well, shape I, shape I, shape guys are always win the front shots, right? Is, is yeah, Brett exactly. is uh, Apex Brett doing USA's again? Yes, oh, let me. Yes. If I send him a link, <laughs> that's if, if I send him a link, you think he would hop on at this time? When when uh, we were doing our, our 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 pose down against each other in heavies, um, I they moved me to that spot with the good lighting. Right, they posed us for like eight minutes, and then they kept moving me the whole time. And then at the very end, they moved me in next to Josh, and they moved Brett out. But Brett thought they moved Brett in, so Brett tried to go in. And then Steve's like, no, 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 not oh, really. And, he, and uh, on stage, oh. Brett just goes, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> to my ear. I was like, oh. Damn. Oh, wait, wait, no, wait. I'm not... So oh, who, who, who got third? Who got third? Brett? Uh, no, no. Ryan, Ryan did. Ryan? Ryan Van Cleave. I, I got to pull him up. Pretty sure, yeah. Hey, yeah that I, was, I wanted great. to rejudge so bad. I thought for sure we would get rejudged on Saturday because my Saturday look was bonkers but didn't get it you you have both those looks online yeah yeah you could you could look at well i mean if you just look at the finals photos of me and josh with like holding our trophies you could just see that i'm a lot more, more conditioned that next day yeah, you get crazy yeah. vascular bro like ridiculous that, oh, that that graininess it like you don't judge graininess but you kind of do because it stands no, out, you definitely bro. do you definitely do that's like you know when you look at like when it's coming to down to it, I think that's always gonna like <laughs> get you over the top. If you're gonna play a part, it's like 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 technically that's not condition, but when you're in condition and you have that, it looks different. Like that that one year branch got second, and it's like, is he actually leaner than Dexter Jackson? No, he's not, but he's just as lean as Dexter Jackson or close to it. And then he has all these weird veins and you know what I'm saying? Shit moving yeah. around. And the shit, yeah, like you said, like uh, uh, when, you're factor, when you're in, right? Yeah, when you're in person yeah. and you're looking at it on stage, it's very eye catching. I, I noticed that watching Mike Condell and Cody Drobot go against each other a couple days ago. What am I looking ahead? Is it the finals? Uh, finals yeah, I think I think it is. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, when I was watching his uh, his pictures leading up to the show. Like the the chest and shit, the shoulders crazy. Oh, I didn't know his legs were that big from the front. So okay, so question: Are are you like a? I guess I, I don't. How do you call it? Are you a a, a, a fast metabolism kind of guy or a slow metabolism slow. kind of guy? It's pretty slow. Oh, f finally, finally, man. <laughs> dude. I want to <laughs> because it, it seems like like nowadays oh. more people have. Well, this is over there eating, uh, eating, and making us look bad. Where the bodybuilders not eating? And she's <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but I, I, I think I figured it out. Why it seems like there's more of the fast metabolism people. It's like, think about it. Who who would get into bodybuilding? People who are trying to put on muscle. So if you're naturally skinny, I think you have a higher chance to get into bodybuilding, right? Whereas I was just an athlete. My family is pretty much overweight. I'm an athlete, so I wasn't overweight because I played sports, and I'm done with sports, and I need a new outlet. Right, so these are the people with slow metabolism. It's not like, oh, I want to get big for for life or something like that. So yeah. it would it would make more sense that there would be more naturally, you know, not Joe though, Joe, Joe and Kenny. Kenny is is West African, so it's just... <laughs> you know, I, I actually just said the other day that I was like, you know, if you're a fat kid growing up, a little bit of discipline later on in life, you can be a really good open bodybuilder. Like it just What's... comes with ease because you can eat. What? Well, well, the see the the size. The size comes for us pretty easily, you know. For for me, I've I've been bullshitting like like Joe. Even though Joe got into it later than me, once he got in, he was all the way in. I wasn't all the way in, so like that's I the didn't only difference. Realize, yeah, that's the only difference. I didn't realize that putting size on was actually easier for me because I had nothing to compare it to. I didn't know until now that I'm on a real regimen. I'm like, oh, this is not normal. This is people don't grow on three thousand calories. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this is a this, this is a thing now, you know. So now I know. But back to Justin. Um, yeah. So how how did your start me off from like off season? Let's say you say you did a, tw a twenty week prep. 
25. Oh, okay. So Fuck, that's a lifetime, bro. <laughs> I know. I'm about to start another one in next week. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, because you were gonna do you were you were about to do another show, right? And then you called it like fuck this. Oh, I would love to do Olympia Amateur. My body. So I asked Steve. I emailed him. I was like, "Hey, so like, where did Josh beat me? Whatever. Let me know." And he said it was very close. You should compete again. That was it. That was all the feedback I got. Oh. So, so I was like, "What does that mean? I should do Olympia Amateur? I don't know nationals." Yeah, yeah. But my I, like, dude, my body was not responding to drugs anymore. Like, the, oh fuck I, that. I was, I was holding water and like oh. nothing. And I hate. I couldn't train. I I go to the gym and. You know, prepping that long, doing two shows, and then trying to do a third. Um, like, who wants to turn pro hating every moment of your life and just, I don't know. And, like, there's no guarantee I would go win the Olympia Amateur anyway. So, it was, yeah, was, yeah. We pulled a on it. Yeah. All right. So, were you with Jacoby 25 weeks out? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, 25 weeks out before he makes the pull. Um, what's your diet looking like? Okay. Like rough calories, rough protein, carbs, fats? Uh, so I, I eat probably 220 grams of protein per meal six times a day. I don't know what that equals out to. And then the, the that's about seven uh, ounces uh, almost, a little yeah, less than yeah. seven, seven eight about, ounces, a, a 3,500, uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. 3,500, uh, three, 350 grams of protein just from the yeah. protein sources. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then carbs usually three, I mean, when I'm maxing out, it's 350 grams of roughly rice per meal. That's, that was probably where I was at. And then. So, so six times a day, 350 yeah. rice, six times a day. Roughly. Okay. So three, six, that's about a hundred, a hundred carbs, 600. Yeah. That's, that's like, I think that's pretty fair. Right. And, right. and then I would say probably a hundred grams of fat sprinkled in throughout the day, you know? Okay. okay. Uh, let's see how you. And did you get kind of chubby or not really? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely thicker than I would have liked. But um, this year I weigh the same and I'm not as uh, soft. D this is your off season look. That was yeah, that was last. Uh, when was this? Twenty five weeks ago. Oh, so th this is leaner than it was last time, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, my bad. Okay, so yeah. All right, now when you flip the switch, boom! Hey, we doing USA's. Where did you go from that? As far as dropping calories, and, and how, how low did you go? So the lo the lowest I got through the whole prep, I'd actually never had a non carb meal, which was a first for me. So in other preps, I've I've done like the Compton Compton one time put me on like chicken and green beans for like four of my meals but like i just wasn't getting lean enough so mo mm -hmm. moving to florida and being out of the northeast i'm so much more active so i usually just increase my output first so I, instead I, of okay i start doing a long dog walk for 40 minutes in the morning and the I summer, do think. in the summer heat and get ten thousand steps a day like usually do that stuff first and then we, we start gradually pulling the food down as like the last resort so Compton, the, Compton, yeah, usually does reverse. Compton usually pulls food down a bit before adding more. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's actually so. I think I did it in this pro in this order. I did more more output, added cardio in when there was none. Uh, cleaned up the diet first, so like no more like chicken parm meals or whatever. Um, just chicken and rice or beef and rice, and um, no more meals out. Right, and then and then gradually pulling rice and stuff from meals and fats and stuff from meals. So like towards the end of prep, I think I was eating maybe like 150 grams of rice per meal, something like that. Oh, that's not too, too bad, right? That, that'll yep. put you at like 50, so like 300 carbs a day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then I would, I would look forward to that cream of rice post-workout, you know, religiously oh every, every day. Yes. I'd be, find weird ways to make it amazing. Like <laughs> yeah. do weird things in prep, like grilling sure. apples and stuff and, yeah. <laughs> how how high did your cardio get? Uh what did I do? I did 45 minutes in the morning was the highest and then I I think I had another 10 minutes post workout. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. But yeah. I I never count the dog walks as cardio. That I mean that was still yeah. like, well, so now I don't count walk. I don't count walking either. I, I'm like you. I don't I don't do the steps thing like it's just the cardio on the treadmill or or whatever yeah. the heart rate up. That's what I count. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do want to. Uh, sorry, go ahead, video. I'll ask after. No, 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 you're good. 
I, I do want to ask is, uh, I am curious, Justin, you are a writer, right? And you actually have books that you've published. Like, you want to go a little bit into that? Because uh, <laughs> I know you've, because I, I was I was so surprised. You know, I know you've, you've written a book that's that's out there on shelves. So if you want to like kind of yeah, just sure. go a little bit into, into that. Yeah. Um, I think it's up there. My You can't really see it because it's blurred, but that's my uh, Master of Fine Arts in um, Creative Writing. So I, uh, undergrad English history double major, I met my wife in creative writing class. Um, cool. When I was a kid, I was like a super nerd into like history and reading about the Crusades and the World Wars and stuff like that. And I got into role playing games. Ages um, of Empire? Yeah. Age, so so yeah. This, is, this is what happened. I was nine, <laughs> I was nine years old. <laughs> I was nine years old and I got my first computer and I wanted a video game to play. And yeah. I got this disc in the, in the mail. It was a demo for age of empires and yeah. I played it and I loved it, but you only got to play for like 15 minutes. So for Christmas, I asked for age of empires for my Christmas gift and I got it from my grandparents. And then I was like, I loaded it up on Christmas morning and I was scrolling through the civilizations. And then I found one where there was an emperor named Justinian. <laughs> Emperor Justinian, my name is Justin, and they were the Byzantines. And then I decided to make that my personality for the next 20 years of my life. Basically, <laughs> that, that, that was a nutshell. That's so like cool, I started, but... Yeah, I started reading all about history. I started buying all these Byzantine Empire books. I have paintings of them in my room here. And uh, and then I, I, you know, studied English in my undergrad and in my master's. I wanted to write a book. So for the thesis, for the manuscript that I had to submit was like a novel length fiction book it's 250 pages uh to finish my degree and then once i got that finished i actually published it like two years Holy ago. Shit. yeah Holy shit. yeah you want you want to give a plug for what the book is and where people can find it if they want to yeah want sure to it's, it? it's called it's called failed states i wrote it in 2015 and i was going through this like internal political transformation where i was working through my ideas about authoritarianism, democracy, republic, and then all ty all types of spiritual questions because I came from like a fundamental Christian background and I was coming out of it and becoming my own person and getting married and reconciling all these things. And I kind of like dumped all this on my character and my book. And I took him and I put him in this future dystopia where he was married to someone who thought differently than, than him. And he had to like work it out in this authoritarian dystopian government where, you know, what would I do in that situation if I was this guy yeah. and my, my wife was pregnant and, and abortion was made illegal. Like how would he, how would he handle that? And I, I just yeah. took it and I just wrote it like from a dream state every morning for like three years. So the book, the book went in this direction that I never really intended it for, but that was kind of like the beauty of the art process. It was exploring that yeah. from my subconscious, basically. And um, I wrote that in 2015 because I was actually t terrified of Trump becoming president. And I'm actually wearing a <laughs> Trump hat now, which just oh, goes yeah. to show how, <laughs> which just yeah. how like crazy the last eight years have gone in our lives <laughs> yeah right and like where i was thinking back then and where i'm thinking now and now i have a daughter so like things, yeah, yeah. Have, things have changed so the, the book the book isn't really political it's really post-apocalyptic and it's a, it's just a lot of what ifs and, and to make the reader think like what would i do in that situation if i really yeah. held this belief but what would i do if i was forced to face that belief right um yeah. so it's it's violent it's short and it's like a thriller so that's awesome you can find it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, those are the two main places. I have I send have me the link. Yeah, sure. Well, send, yeah. send me the link. I'm gonna put the link in the description box, and I might flash it on the screen. I didn't have. I didn't know that about Justin. That that, that, that yeah. Actually, yeah. Cool. I found that that's out through the Scott interview. That's what I was. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, that's yeah. that's why I wanted to put it out there because you know a lot of times when we come on here. We talk about bodybuilding and whatnot, but people forget like people have lives outside of this that that they are doing, and so people are doing some incredible things. So to to have yeah, a yeah, self published yeah. book, it, it's kind of a big deal. So so congrats, Justin. Um, I, the other question I did want to ask you too, because you just mentioned it, is you have a daughter. So um, my question is, were you before you had your daughter? Were you already competing? prior to that and if you were how has that changed like 
being a father and prepping for bodybuilding shows versus kind of, you know, how, how, how you kind of did it before in the past. Sure. Yeah. So I do have a daughter, she's turning six and we did not plan to have her. <laughs> it was a surprise. It was a surprise. Um, yeah. Obviously it changed our lives a lot and for the better. Uh, obviously yeah. there was challenges with that. Um, but I, I competed every year, you know, even raising her, even through us both having full-time jobs, even during my master's degree, all that stuff. So it was, it was challenging, but it adds, it adds a lot of interesting aspects to bodybuilding and to life that you probably wouldn't get to enjoy. And I, and I, I always get a little bit sad when I have friends and I have a lot of friends that feel this way, like, well, having kids is, would never be for me. And yeah. I, I maybe have felt that way in the past about myself, but having her is also the best thing that's ever happened to me. And like, I think back during COVID when I was training out of my garage, getting ready for nationals, like my little three-year-old would wander in and just start like screaming. Cause she was so excited to like see me lifting weights and stuff like that. Um, it's funny because she's grown up around like large humans her whole life. And she's been eating a lot of beef, beef and rice and chicken. And so, dope. Uh, <laughs> so she's going to be very, <laughs> she's going to have very high standards seeing all these jacked girls and jacked, <laughs> jacked guys her whole life. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, like as far as bodybuilding goes, it's, it's seasonal for us. We're all not going to be doing this our whole lives. Yeah. Like we're, everybody on this chat right now is probably in the prime of their life for this. Having yeah. kids is always something you could do in the future. Having a writing career. I always think, Oh, I should be writing more. I should be doing more book stuff, but like the window of opportunity for bodybuilding is very small. Yeah. Um, so I'm very grateful that I get to do it while I get to do it. Very grateful that I get to have a daughter during that time. But I also, I think it's like, Hey, I think I want to have more kids cause it's so fun. Um, go like the thing is like bodybuilding becomes this I, th I think we put so much pressure on ourselves because it's so regimented it's kind of monkish we we live in a box we eat in a box you know the jay cutler quote and all that stuff having a kid introduces a level of chaos to it that actually helped help me kind of like chill out about it because it's like mm -hmm. at the end of the day at the end of the day i have way bigger concerns in the world than like if i have food in the fridge for the, yeah. for, the chi for the chicken meal or whatever you know it, it it puts a lot more things in the perspective um and in that way it kind of makes bodybuilding easier for me if that makes sense there, there yeah. was a there was like a post of uh seth perosi somewhere down the line where bro he's like him and his daughter are doing like a most muscular or some shit and i was like i want that that's what i want <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that justin's over here doing the same shit and i'm like ah. <laughs> Yo, it, it, it's crazy you say that. It's crazy you say that, Justin, because we we had this debate one or two times about the having kids and bodybuilding. And at the time, I felt like, you know, there's no way I could do that. That would be so difficult and impossible. And we had it a couple of times on different podcasts. And the more I heard some of the other guys argument, especially Stu, I kind of started to, to think the, the opposite direction. I'm like, hmm maybe the way we think is wrong. I'm like, he was like, bro, what other job, what other grown man is working a job making this amount of money and has this much free time? Just because you're cooking meals and eating doesn't mean it's not free time. Like, think about our parents. My dad would just come home at night and that was it. He wasn't home cooking and eating, you know? I, I Like, in prep, obviously, your brain isn't working 100%, but... Was my dad's brain working 100%? Working <laughs> fucking all, you know, fucking 70 hours a week and shit. So technically, I don't know. It's just like any other grown ass man working a job, I, I guess. I right? certainly think, I mean, I, I, I'm not a father, so Justin is probably the most educated in this, in this aspect, mm -hmm. but I certainly think that being single without kids is still way easier there's a lot of things of when you have kids there's a sure. lot of things when you have kids that that you don't take into account you know we may consider bodybuilding a, a four-hour thing right cook your meals go to the gym but there are other things your time is no longer your own um once you have kids and in bodybuilding that could be very conflicting uh with doing this so i, I still think that the other way is still better regardless of how the argument goes but it still can be done right i mean justin is living proof of that there are a lot of guys who are living proof of it. in fact 
Justin didn't even mention it, but I believe your wife, Ruth, is also a competitor. So it's not just him. Both of them are active competitors and still raising a daughter. So it can be done. It's just yeah. uh, if you put two and two together, I still think that obviously not having a kid gives you a lot more flexibility uh, to do bodybuilding than, than vice versa. Oh, no, for sure. Just that I, at the time, I felt like in comparison to other people, right? Because in my head, I'm like, no, just bodybuilding in particular, like having kids is making it impossible. But then it, it's more so that having kids in general is a big yeah. responsibility, you know. Yeah. But like, we're not as special as we think we are. Like versus like the guy working construction out all day and gets home and oh, he's tired as fuck, you know. So I, I think I was giving bodybuilders too much credit as far as it's so hard, right? That we can't have kids when the truth is that. Every adult that has kids is still facing these struggles that we would face as bodybuilders, right? You know, yeah. I guess uh, for me right now, I, I I still wouldn't want any extra responsibility, though. Just personally, yeah. you know? I mean, I mean, you know, you take on you take on things, right? Uh, so, for example, I left my old job to do this full time and do a job that allows bodybuilding to be, I guess you could say, easier. That doesn't mean that I couldn't have done it. It's just like in my head, I'm like, how can I make this it's a approach? choice? Yeah, yeah like yeah. if I have the opportunity to make something easier on myself yeah, to get to the goal, right. I'm gonna do that. Now, if life happens, right, the little surprise, you got a little girl, he didn't say, Oh, I can't do this. It's like, well, this is probably gonna be a little more difficult, but it can still be done as long as I want to do it. So yeah. you you adapt, you know. Yeah, so it's just like, for sure. are you willing to adapt or be like, it's too it's too hard for me? Yeah, the two distinct aspects to it that I I do want to point out in that scenario, baby, that you pointed out is one: most bodybuilders are still working regular jobs, so bodybuilding is sort of like job number two, right? Yeah. So it, it's more of two full time jobs plus a kid versus. If you were just a full-time bodybuilder with sponsorships, <laughs> it's very rare. Yeah. And then having a kid, right? Like Derek Lunsford's situation is not yeah, going to be yeah, the same yeah. as, as sure. the rest of us. You know what I mean? So so that's why sure. I think it's still very difficult as a bodybuilder because you, you still have to do what everyone else is doing, plus do this and still raise your child. That, that's right. I was just watching a, a, a Sebum video as well, and I forgot Sebum had a kid. That's what, yeah, a daughter. You know, and Listen, contrary to what people might believe, Sebum C- works, you know what I'm saying? Like, he actually yeah. works, you know? So it's like, I, I think most people probably think he just sits around and plays video games probably, but the, the the guy is a legit owner of a company, you know? So I'm watching him work, you know, shoot the content and then watch the baby. Cor- Courtney was doing most of the work, but yeah, she got to step out and shit like that. So um, he, he made he made it look kind of kind of fun, but obviously you know, that's not the whole picture. I'm sure he's, yeah. he's losing out on sleep and shit like that. You know, now like what, what, what Justin said. I mean, if it happens, I think as you know the character like that I know you guys have, and you know, uh, you 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 will step up to the plate and, and make it happen. You know, what I'm saying? like yeah. like we do with anything else in life. You know, you know? so like yeah. even if we don't choose to do it, if it did happen. At this point, I feel like we would be able to 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 make it make it happen. Yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is, people have been having kids for thousands of years in way tougher <laughs> conditions than us. Like, That's I'm, what way, I'm way more stressed out about my corporate job that I have to work. First row problems, and, and then other stuff, and then like down that list is bodybuilding. Like, training is fun for me, and yeah, then yeah. and then like organizing my day around the gym and the food. Yeah, it's annoying or whatever. I can't go out and stuff, but like. We've we've made it work, and having a kick ass partner is obviously very key. If you're married, married or with the wrong person, obviously Ooh, that's a whole important. different level of complication. That's everything, bro. That's yeah. everything. That that's literally everything, and that, that's what's gonna make and break your life, you know, man. So that that helps a lot. So hey, uh, all these guys making it work, they they have amazing women in their lives as well, because that, it just wouldn't be possible without it. All right. You know, I'm kind of curious as to read his book. I know it's kind of, we kind of went past the conversation, but you're you you pretty much said the fictional character is you. So yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's that's funny. you that's you in a in a different setting, but that's like the character. Whatever he's doing in that book, 
is in your head how you would handle that situation. So that was you, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you have to you have to read it to find out because yeah. he's faced with some tough decisions. Yeah. That's funny as fuck, though. I w- I'm going to make my own fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, 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 a lot we, for Joe. We don't have a lot of writers. We don't have a lot of writers like bodybuilders, you know, that that do writing. So like, you're such a creative person, you know, bodybuilders are. Writer, so yeah. honestly, bro, like, obviously, I know you don't have time or even kids. We just talk about all this stuff, but if, dude, especially with your uh experience in the industry and stuff like that like you probably should consider writing a book at some point even if it's fictional maybe something in this space but not meatheadish you know yeah. look at it from an actual realistic perspective that every human being can relate to i think yeah. it would do really well i've thought about it i've kicked around a bunch of ideas like that since i yeah there's this term called write what you know and i'm in this little niche industry that uh yeah. I've, I've been kicking around different ideas about how to do that i just the thing is i'm so busy with work and with competing that the, the book yeah. stuff is like you know, uh, parent, yeah. parenting competing yeah. corporate job so like yeah. when i'm pro- when i'm like on the tail end of my career i'm definitely going to write more and i've always thought about that would be an interesting angle to yeah. uh that's dope but the thing always, is, though, there's not a lot of readers in the bodybuilding world. So, like, I'll post poetry. I write poetry sometimes. And I used to, if you scroll back far enough on my Instagram, you can see some of yeah. my poetry. But, like, I post a poem, it'll get, like, 11 likes. And then I, <laughs> I, I post, like, a like yeah. a physique update, and it gets 400 likes. And I'm just, Whoa, like, I'm Justin, close. you're looking big, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see that, you know, as long, as long as you have an audio book and shit, and you put it out there. True, yeah. I think, the, I think that, that book has an audio book. Like, yeah, see, it's one of those things, you know, I think a lot of bodybuilders, like, drive a lot or do a lot of cardio, so I definitely see it. You could do it. Yeah, I think converting mine to audiobook, it cost me, like, two grand, but um, yeah. I, felt, I felt like it was worth it because I felt like more people would. Um, That's what I'm saying, yeah. See, more people have time to listen to something than sit down and read it because you right. can listen subconsciously. Just, but, I could... I- I could barely actually read, like by the end of prep. From being honest, you know, <laughs> I, I, awesome, yeah. I can't, I can't focus long enough to read. So that's definitely gonna make a difference. But yeah, I, I just thought Justin was a meathead this whole time. I didn't know Justin was a smart. I'm, I'm finding out. I'm learning that's, some new shit. That's why we have to that's do this. The, Bring more people yeah, on. Yeah, so bro. Can explain their stories, man. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, you know, hundred uh, percent. Every time. I mean, I, I'm obviously speaking for myself. You know, people they'll see me in the gym and they won't even approach me. And then one day somehow it'll happen where they have a conversation and they'll be like, you know, you are nothing like I thought you're going to be by looking at you. Yeah. It's just like, you know, I'm a fucking person, right? Like, you know, it's you know, hard. <laughs> it's, it, it's so hard to see that perspective because we just don't see ourselves that way, bro. We just, and we're not like that, but if you really think about it, like sometimes we have to take a step back because I think we're so immersed in this. Just be an average person and see one of us. But that shit is alarming, bro. You know, I, I think we're so numb to it. We don't even notice it. But I'm like, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, huh, that kind of makes sense. The, the other day I was in the gym training somebody and then, you know, John, that, that was weeks ago now. Joan Paul came by. We talked a little bit and she was like, oh my God, they so scary. And I'm like, they would literally come in. They would look, cut, crack, come in here cracking jokes and talking like they, it. It was the, the complete opposite from scary. But it's just like people aren't used to that. You got to keep, you know. <laughs> Think about the first time you saw a bodybuilder in in the flesh in real life, right? Like it's just human instinct. Exactly. It's like this person, this person is dangerous. You know, I need to stay away. Like it's just <laughs> pure human instinct. Like that. That's how it works. You know what I mean? Like because I just came back from Texas, right? I just spent a week there and. Over here in Jersey, like where I am, it's it's normal, right? Like people know me around here, so it's okay. But when I was walking around in Texas, bro, like you should have seen the looks I was getting. Like I, I literally had I told Andrew, I'm like, dude, this is strange. Like I would see people like look like yeah. this. Like, you know, it's like because dude, if you've never seen a bodybuilder before, it's it's quite a lot to take in. It's like a human being can actually look like this, you know, mm-hmm. like a lot of things are going through your mind, and then obviously. You're not thinking this person is a nice guy. You're probably thinking I should probably stay away from this person because I could get hurt really bad. Like if things go wrong, you, you know, gotta yeah. imagine the, the you gotta imagine the shock factors. Like I'm gonna yeah. like put yourself in a setting like somewhere like Disneyland that has a ton of people, 
How yeah. often do you see a dude just as jacked as you walking around that bitch? You like, don't. You, and how many people are there? See. Yeah, so you can imagine the shock value you bring when you walk into a store or a regular place and they're like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but we're surrounded <laughs> by that all the time. Yeah, right. Like we, like you said, we become numb to it. Like I saw Baby yeah, walk yeah. in, this huge yeah. ass black dude, and I'm like, yeah, that's just Baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> see, th that, that's another thing. I'm even more numb to it because where do I go? I only go to the gym, right? And yeah. then when I go to the supermarket, I'm in West Hollywood. There's way crazier looking shit out here than me, right? So they're they're used to it here too. So I don't they don't I don't get a reaction. So now when I go somewhere else, it's amplified because I'm so in my own world that I don't realize that oh yeah. this is different. And I, I got to factor in I'm also black with dreadlocks and covered in tattoos. That that's not something I think of. So you got you got to think. So, and I'm on my side. So the average person they don't know what the fuck to think. You know what I'm saying? It, it, this is not like a a normal look. You know? So you you it's like you can't take offense. Like what? Which I, I don't think any of us ever take offense. No. We we just probably get surprised. Like, oh, okay, okay. I, I I forgot. I'm I'm somewhere that they're not used to seeing this. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times it's not even rude. They're literally just like shocked. Same way yeah. we would be if we saw like a seven foot lady walking around we'd be like yeah oh it's not like you know, it's, it's, like oh shit it, it's it's interesting this is something paul and i have talked about too uh recently and i've been getting kind of lucky right so when i first started personal training like after i left my job and stuff i was getting clients left and right and you would think oh you know like the better i get the leaner the bigger and all that people are just <laughs> gonna bigger. come pouring in that's the thing once i started looking unachievable People are like, man, fuck that. I don't want to work with that. But I don't lately, die. It, it, it literally is. So, so now you have a look, and then people are like, what the fuck? And then uh, people don't want to approach you because there's like an intimidation factor now, right? So lately, one girl, like after having a conversation with me, she worked at the front desk. You guys, uh, baby, have you seen her? I, her name's Cindy. She knew? She at Madhouse. She, she's a worker at Madhouse. So, oh, but she she's uh, I reposted her, her story. But um, so she worked the front desk, and obviously if she works there. There's uh, and she's the girl everybody knows her. They saw her work with me one time, and now I'm getting more clients because they're like they they went up to her like, "Hey, you're working with that guy? That guy's fucking huge! Like, what are you doing? Like, you want to be like that?" She's like, no, like he's a regular ass dude. Just he teaches me methods exactly. on how I can build myself up or different. Like, I just want to learn. So, and then I had that conversation with her that I'm having with you guys. Like, you know, it's, they kind of, they kind of think a certain way or you're going to turn them into a monster or whatever, like, yeah, or yeah. you're, you're going to be mean. But once you get to know them or whatever, like you understand, like, oh, it's not like that. Wait, what? There's no, there's, mm -hmm. There's just no relatability anymore, right? Like, yeah, like when yeah. We, when we all when we all talk, right? We can be off this podcast, and even the things we've talked about here, we talk about somebody though, but we talk about life, right? But when you talk to a normal person, a lot of times they can't relate to you anymore, right? The only thing they they want to say is probably something gym related because that's the only thing that they can. Yes. Of course. So, so it, bec it becomes tough for a normal person to to approach you, especially from a business perspective, and think that. Oh, this person, if I train with this person, it's going to be a normal workout versus going to, to the girl that's giving me medicine balls over there. Uh, exactly. Exercise. They're not going to think that way, you know, which which makes it hard sometimes. What I, what I said earlier that this is such a niche that sometimes we get really closed in on, on a niche and we don't really see what's going on outside, right? Yeah. Uh, most of my clients are like competitors or like close to it, right? And then what we consider making good money is 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 like child's play to like to like the more relatable people right so for yeah. for 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 a bodybuilding coach let's say as myself if i was to charge 150 200 dollars a month let's say 200 dollars a month and i have 20 clients right what would that equal uh, uh, uh like monthly 20, 200 times 20, 20 clients two hundred a month yeah four thousand four thousand okay. sorry about that four thousand <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that that to us would be like Justin, that's see what, a you your audio book, Justin. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mo, mo, most of us competitors would be like, "That's a good little chunk to to make from coaching. That's cool." 
bro, the, the, these, these kids that, that be at these, these gyms with the, with the, with the, with the tripods. I mean, I, I go to zoo culture. They making way more than that. Like a, a lot of these kids are millionaires. You know what I'm saying? Coaching. We're talking about a 22 year old has some abs. Got a, got some couple of tattoos driving a Lambo. You know what I'm saying? So it showed the, 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 those relatable people actually are the ones making the most money. What, what we're making, okay, I believe Matt Jansen is rich, but that's that's not like just coaching, right? He, he had the whole empire. He's the one percent. He's the one yeah. percent of coaches around here too. Exactly, yeah. and I, I mean, I see those rich from a different business as well. But like these kids, some of these kids are rich from coaching, just selling programs and selling. Most of them aren't even doing the coaching, right? Because they're relatable. So the, the the funny part is, I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, the bigger I get, I'm getting jacked. I'm moving up. I'm gonna get more clients. I'm getting more niche clients, which I do actually prefer. But if I was trying to make as much most money possible, I don't need these niche niche clients. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's the same as it's the same as why you know everyone talks about it. Why are influencers online? You know, have all the followings because exactly what Joe just mentioned, just from a personal training perspective, put it onto social media. You see a kid with basic set of abs right it looks like he just i don't know he was born with the abs and he just did a did you know 10 minutes on treadmill for two weeks <laughs> it's like yeah. when people look at that to us it's like oh he's mad soft like he looks 14 weeks out but yeah. to, to normal people it's like oh if if that kid can do it that's all i want i don't want to look like joe you know that's yeah. too big i want to look like that guy so he probably knows what to do not knowing that joe is probably the guy you want to come to because he understands he has the knowledge, but you're just looking at it from a perspective of if that guy looks like that and that's what I want to look like, then he must have the tools necessary. And that's why these kids are and making money. You, you got you gotta you gotta know how to work the system too, because like yeah, for example, I, I tell everybody first impressions are everything, right? 100%. So 100%. pretty much when, when I talk to anybody, I'm like, I, without saying it, it's like give me a chance to show you what I can do. I do that, right? So if I can get you in front of me, literally like 99% of the time, they're going to stick for at least like a month's work because they see the difference between like, oh, I'm putting you through a good workout or holy shit, I'm learning something as I'm working out. And you see how it like, it has nothing to do like with me trying to get you huge. It's me trying to get you to understand how things work within that. So like you... You, the person, they should be smart enough to decipher what it is, right? Like, oh, this person is just kind of working me out, or holy shit, like it's like taking a class. I'm actually like getting real information that I can apply to myself, you know, compared to just like, oh, this guy looks good and he puts me through a workout, but that's it. Like, people kind of weed themselves out. So, like, yeah. the the better I got at, uh, or the better I got physically the clients that I would get, they stick around longer. Yeah. So, you know, it, you, it, it, more you, niche you, as well. Yeah. yeah even, if they're, even if they're not, even if they're not competitors, they're people that strive to be like, or, you know, they say strive to drastically change. They, uh, they're not people that are like, Oh, try it out and then leave. And then they're cycling exactly. all the time. So well, now I'm, now I'm getting people that stick from like three months all the way through a whole year kind of thing. And I don't have to, it's better that way. You said something about the the front desk girl. My the most successful my business ever was was when I was training bikini girls. Like mm -hmm. like girl clients are different. They're super they're super loyal and and they spread the word and they don't go anywhere. The, these guy clients that compete they they want the secret. They want to know Joe. Girls are the best Joe to train, some... bro. Girls yeah, are the best to train. A hundred percent. But like, but like, if a guy gets with you, like, let's say a competitor, they want to pick your brain. They want to grab the secret and then go work with me. Then go work with Janicky. They, they want to, you know, you, you know how guys are. They want to yeah. get all the coaches' secrets and shit like that. Whereas girls don't give a fuck about that. They trust you. You, you get them the results. You good to go. They they are gonna be there. Just like, if you fuck up though, they'll they'll they they could turn around pretty fast. So yeah. don't fuck up. Don't don't do anything. Our stupid. first impression, first <laughs> impression too, bro. Like. You better yeah. come off professionally when you're working with a woman. Like, 100%. don't be stupid. Keep it that way. Too. You're, you're, you're losing a gold mine of a fuck ton of other people to come with that one person that you got. Exactly. Look out for them, too, if, if you can. They're, they're, they're not going to forget that. They're not going to forget that, mm -hmm. and then they'll look out for you. But let, let's get back to bodybuilding. I don't think we talked about this yet. 
We haven't even talked about it in the group chat. Oh, I think Paul sent it, maybe. He but did, Samson, but he didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Samson and Oxygen Gym. Hey, once you get to Oxygen Gym, mandatory, before you even have your first meal, you got to up your weight by 10 pounds. The the, <laughs> the the man weighed himself on scale 330. The minute he gets out of Oxygen Gym, he's 340. Yeah, it hadn't even been a couple of days yet. So once you, once you pull through that mirror, 10 pounds heavier. <laughs> no, but by the time he landed and probably weighed himself, he probably did had gained ten pounds from that from that fucking plane ride. <laughs> you know, I actually but, want to bring something up about Samson. Mm -hmm. You know how we say, uh, obviously, conditioning has been the thing, right? That's been the thing for a while now with him. The last what four or five shows. Mm -hmm. um, so Samson, one thing he does is he drastically, or he improves, like. Drastically, yeah. literally show to show. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. It's, I, I think it's always going to be really hard when you're constantly improving size wise to be conditioned. And be more I bring this be up. More yes. Because I'm relating this to myself, right? I, I put on 20 pounds of stage weight and I was conditioned for my pro debut, but I, I wasn't necessarily fucking diced. But that was all new muscle tissue I put on. I don't believe you can get absolutely diced with all that new muscle muscle tissue. So oh, Samson that's... continuously growing, I don't think he'll ever be able to get conditioned if he always gets bigger. That makes sense? Unless you're willing to go back down and wait. Like like when Quint came in for New York, he was peeled, but he literally came right back down to – the way he was at, which you don't want to do, right? That's what but, I'm saying. So you yeah. have to decide, right? There, there's got to be a time where Samson decides that, okay, like, yes, he he clearly can get bigger and improve, but if the one thing that is his feedback outside of his back shots, like, which he's crazily improved, like, it's kind of like I have to not try to be bigger anymore. I just have to get more condition now. So my – sure. I'm not uh, trying no, to add sure. a bunch of new tissue. What, so uh, uh, seeing uh, Samson uh, add more tissue, isn't that going to hurt anything to accomplish the main goal? What I will say is that um, I think he, with his genetics, well, he's going to grow anyways, bro. He, he's, he, I don't think he's going to stop growing until his body is is ready to stop growing. I don't uh, – uh, Milos never actually really force feeds that much. I think with Samson, the food wasn't crazy high. You know, I I think just in that environment that that he's in right now with the rebound, uh, compete rebound compete. I think he's gonna keep growing. So so the only way he could bypass what you just said is coming even lighter, like he did for the Arnold UK, right? So let's say whether you stay lighter or go heavier, uh, as long as you come down past a certain weight, that you know that maybe you do lose a little bit of new muscle. Uh, I think you can get that condition, right? Would you say that? Like, let, let, let's say if you would have came down closer to your USA's weight, I think you could have been a little harder, but you definitely would have lost some of the new, new tissue, right? Yeah, which is why we played that game, right? It was more so, yeah. like, I, I had a bunch of new tissue. It will give me as condition as possible, and wherever I fall, I fall. But I thought, you know, oh, for the record, I, I thought y'all made the right choice per personally. I, no, I knew he did. Like, I wouldn't have okay. done it any other way. There was zero regret. Like, I absolutely love my look. I kept my legs. And that's one of my biggest things. I need to be able to, because we just talked about earlier, my front shots and stuff. Yeah. And that's the, the only thing, is, like, keeping my legs is important because now if I keep that size and then kind of add on to it, my waist is only going to get smaller looking. Just bit, like, yeah, yeah. You know, through illusion. But um, Samson if, has if to I do the opposite. Oh, go ahead. I think yeah, Samson is gonna need to do the opposite because he came in lighter at UK, a little bit smaller, harder, and the judges said preferred it. So I think he's gonna have to continue to to do that until because he, they're telling him you're not gonna move up any higher with that with that same condition. No. So he, he's gonna have to go for the the other the other look that may or may not be better, but that's what they want. So you, you got to do it. You know, you like for me, if, if I, 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 if I weighed two forty seven the day of uh, Cal, and say this whole time goes by this off season, and I died it down for my next show, and say I stepped on stage at like let's just say two forty four, like 
it'll be a way better look. Even if there was no, like, if the scale weight went backwards, because the muscle's not as new and you could, like, push the diet farther, I, I think it would, something like that would be a better look, which is kind of what I would think Samson would want to do, kind of thing. Yeah, for, for Samson, yeah, like like we were, we've all just been saying here, I think if he comes in with the same relative condition he had last year, he's probably... I don't know if he can maintain that number three slot. So he's going to have to. Yes. The, the, the good thing is that it will be a completely new look, which no one has seen. And sometimes that's an advantage. The bad thing is, well, if it doesn't look as good, because we all know, like with Nick, with, that's exactly what they told Nick, right? He's coming a little more peeled than he's ever been. And then they docked him for it. So it's like, we just don't know. But I think the strategy, this prep for Samson he has to come in as, sh as shredded as possible. I don't think this, to me, this whole 340 thing that's going on here, I think it's, I, I mean, I don't think any of us think it's true tissue at this point, right? It's probably just some water and he, he just landed, you know, he's, he just got. And there. nobody, nobody cares because Mr. Yeah. Olympia is not even 240. So it, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 just so everybody knows, bro, like. When I, you know, my rebound, I, I, I went from like two, two twenty something to two eighty eight, and people yeah. like, how the fuck did you? Like, when I came off everything and I stopped running, like, like the the insulin and stuff, and the uh, lowered the GH, I instantly lost like 10, 15 pounds right off the bat, like instantly. Yeah. So yeah. the number, the number ain't shit, bro. Like you're blown yeah. up, you're fucking huge, but then it's literally just puffed up fucking weight. It's not real. Yeah, because, like, back to Samson, like, dude, like, he, I, obviously, oxygen, I don't know if that's part of their thing. They, they love the big weight there. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, they do. Ruby, 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 Rubio, Rubio is probably, like, what, 280 at this point, and I think he looks crazier than this right now, you know? So it's like, the weight doesn't the matter. Most, I think I think Rubio is the most muscular person in the IBB right now. I think he's top five Olympia. I'm saying it right now. He's top five. So who would he have to beat? I was actually just talking to somebody about Rubio. Like, do you, you know how, like, you, oh, the, the bigger you get, like, muscular-wise in certain areas, the less detail you're going to have. Like, you know, like, a lot of people lose that, like, crazy detail in their glutes and stuff mm -hmm. when they really grow them big. Do you think Rubio will ever be able to, like, have crazy conditioning in his quads because of how muscular yes. they are? Yes, I, I think he. I think he will. I think he will. I mean, the guy. The guy. Um, he has good. Yeah, I, I, I thought he had good detail personally. But, but I mean, he, he hasn't. Know. He has. He hasn't done a lot of things that most guys at that level are doing. You know, the deep tissue work, like even the training style, up mm -hmm. till now has not been there. So, think of him as like a rough diamond, right? A, a diamond that's just completely raw. Like he's he's not refined yet. Like even if, when you look at his um, updates recently, his upper body has actually caught up. He actually looks balanced in his recent updates over there at Dubai. So I think that will come with time and refinement and good coaching. But, you know, and this is what we were talking about, right, with Samson. It gets to a point where size is no longer the issue. You don't need any more size. So if he stays a lot lighter, you know, they try to refine that, do some deep tissue work. Dude, those tri issues will come out. Like, no problem. I don't think you'd have to yeah. Justin, what do you think? You've been, you've been quiet, so I, I kind of want to. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I admittedly don't follow the pro ranks that much. I don't care as much because mm -hmm. I'm still I'm still an amateur. Um, it it remind it reminds me of a lot of the like taller guys in the amateur ranks that always feel the need to post their weight. Um, yeah. they're, checking, they're checking photos yeah. or whatever, you know, even though they got third call outs, it's like, well, I was 274, so, so it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything to me. I just want to see yeah. Samson get shredded and be at his best. Um, we were talking earlier about um, the influencer stuff and like the environment that you're in and like being around huge dudes and stuff. And at Raw, it's like ridiculous now because yesterday I was training. And Nick Walker was right next to me doing curls, and I just like couldn't fathom the size of his arms. Like I was like, this yeah. is probably the, this is probably the largest pair of arms in this hemisphere, maybe that I'm a, that I'm aware of. In and history, uh, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like looking at that, and then like there's there's a blessing over there goofing around, and he looks like a monster. And then like, oh, there's Brett, and there's Martin, and like. That's a lot. All these guys are under 300 pounds and uh, they're all really, really good. 
So I mean, I don't, I don't put a lot of stock into the three. You know what's crazy, yeah. Justin is you're looking at them like, damn, that's fucking huge. This is like that, but you're probably just as big as them. You just don't see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, no, I'm so serious, bro. <laughs> like, cause it trips me out. Yeah, like it sucks. <laughs> Beatty, Beatty comes in and tells me and Paul, damn, you're fucking huge. What the fuck? And I'm like, Beatty, you're just as big as us, bro. Like, <laughs> like I, like in the, when I look at him in the mirror and videos, I'm like, you're pretty fucking big, Beatty. <laughs> Every, everybody holds it different too. So that's why the weight doesn't really mean anything. Brett, Brett, he's like, he has the crazy chest shelf and then it's up here somewhere. Martin has the crazy traps and shoulders and, Everybody just hold it and you nick with the arms. It's like everybody has their own their own look, but wait, honestly, wait. Yeah, Don't Brad has like in. Brad has like bird bones and he has like the smallest joints. I could put, I could like take my know. fingers and like put them around his ankles. They're so small. I don't, I don't know how he does it, man. I, yeah. I just watched the. Uh, there was a raw video that just came out. And he was he was doing chest with Martin. He's just like inclined four plates like it's nothing, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like. His joints and everything, they're so small. Like I'm like, dude, how are you how are you this strong and you still yeah. like, and he just yeah. he just but, came back. Butcher like, bomb, bro. Like, butcher bomb. Dude, dude, he lost like <laughs> did he lose like sixty pounds or something like that just oh less than a year ago at this yeah, point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a, like, um, too long ago. He had a I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of Brett, man. I'll be honest, I'm a real big fan. Like he's, he's very funny to train up. Yeah, yeah, we we hyped him up like what five podcasts ago. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 such a fan. I'm such a fan. Yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna definitely reach out to him, but Ali post post show, so yeah. I could be like a, a better host. Yeah, he's just started prep uh, last week. Texted me, told me that. Oh, sick. Yeah, sick. I don't know if that's common knowledge, but. Can, can I ask what show? Or, 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 or it's not. It's not going to qualify for this year. I think it's okay. um, like Legion, like a Legion yeah, show. I think, or something? I think it's that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. Is, is that a is that an exclusive? <laughs> Just put great I, I haven't heard anything. I, I don't think. I don't. I don't think, I don't think it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> that they oh. just breaking news, breaking that, news. That's the topic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Broken. He's gonna text me like, "Why are you? Why are you saying that?" <laughs> well, it, it's, it's not a secret anymore. If it was, <laughs> uh, you guys want to do some questions? Sure, sure. Let's get into it. Where's Paul, by the way, Joe? I haven't seen Paul. In I'm gonna be honest, bro. He was messaging me like literally right before the. We we all jumped on, so sending me like fucking food shit, and I thought he was gonna jump on. I was like, "What the fuck?" Like when I saw it was his YouTube, like, fuck, yeah. who the fuck's Paul? <laughs> he probably went to eat. You know, no, for real. It's like uh, Paul is uh, he gets. We all do. We we he gets really tired like throughout the day. You know, like it's just yeah. You know, the you eat food. like he'll 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 say he's gonna come on, and then literally when I ask him, hey, what happened? He's like, honestly, dog. I just got tired as fuck and it knocked out. So, I will what say I haven't gi I haven't given an update of, about this, but I have been using a CPAP now for the last twenty seven days, <laughs> and bro, my life has changed. Change, change your life, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly getting to that point, bro, because my sleep bro, is fucking terrible. Joe, I'm telling you, do it. I believe. Shout it. out to Scott Scott Mice uh, from the Discord because. He put me through with Lofta, so shout out to Scott because nice. my my insurance was my insurance. Do you was do uh, nasal or full mask? Around. I do. I tried the nasal, bro, and dude, I couldn't breathe. I was getting yeah, anxious. I, my I couldn't was do going either. Yeah. So I just do the full mask. Yeah, but uh, bro, I'm telling you, like, it, it's it's been such a life changer. At first, I was like, uh, everyone's saying it, it it works, but I was like, after 15 days, like after two weeks, bro, I just noticed like. Before 11 a.m., I'm tired. I, right. I feel like I need a nap. Now I can go through the whole day, yep. and I don't feel as tired anymore. And it's actually – I think that's part, part of why I got to 280, if I'm being completely yeah. honest. I, I believe like, it. My house could yeah. be on fire, and I would save, like, my <laughs> wedding photos, my family, obviously, and my CPAP. Like, I don't care. The CPAP <laughs> is that important to me. Yeah, yeah. man, because I've been I've been in denial because I I'm like you know nobody tells me that I snore or nothing like they don't like I I would just tell myself oh Joe you're just uh, you're low on food you're in prep or and then also like 
during the beginning of the rebound portion, I'm like, oh, Joe, you're just, you know, you're still really lean. This, this, and that. I'm like, no, nah, man, after a certain point, like, this isn't it. It's just, I, yeah. I know, like, and how many times I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm like, I never used to be this way. Like, yeah. and I'm like, oh, well, I've been heavier. But I'm like, okay, yeah, you've been heavier. But at the same time, like, you're, like, leaner, right? And at a heavy weight, like, yeah. this is a heavier heavy than you were when you were heavier. <laughs> so, like, yeah. it's a different kind of heavy. So there's no Dude. there's no more, like, uh, delusion. Like, I, I for sure need one. There's 100%. a significant yeah. health benefit to the CPAP for all the sleeping reasons. But um, every time that you go through one of those episodes at night where you stop breathing and you cut off oxygen to your brain because your lungs are operating briefly because you're basically, you do this thing where you're snoring and you're like, like that. Yeah. Um, your body responds by producing more red blood cells to make up for the lack of oxygen that you're losing every time that happens. So the longer you go, the longer you go sleep apnea, the higher your IBCs go up, messes up your hematocrit. So you'll actually see with CPAP will reduce those numbers without having to even do blood dumps and that, things and stuff. Like that, that was really the worst, bro. When uh, I can you you may have experienced it already because your height to your weight ratio, but when I was like pushing food plus being at 300 pounds and like trying to because you're still force feeding even though you get to that weight you still have to force feed to kind of hold it because anybody can like touch it and then you know back off so yeah wait like laying down and then feeling like like it wouldn't i, I never woke up like <gasps> but i would feel like fuck like two or three times it wouldn't my the air wouldn't go through what the fuck and so i'd get up and lean against my fucking dresser or whatever like and my girl at the time would be like, Joe, you okay? I'm just, just give me a second. Like, I'm trying not to freak the fuck out because I can't get Bro. a solid pathway through or air through. I'm like, I would, I would, I would wake up and my throat would be so dry. It literally looks, it literally felt like I, I had like chewed a bunch of sand throughout the night. And my girlfriend would tell me like, you were gasping for air the entire night. That's like, yeah, the fun. entire night. Dude, I when I did my sleep study, bro, I had over a hundred events oh. in one night. Yikes. So so it's like, dude, you you may and I I felt like, oh, I'm, I'm fine, you know. I was like at the time, I'm like, I just started GH. That's why I'm that's why I'm a little bit tired. That's dude. what I'm saying. I kept telling myself it was everything else. Yeah. Like like, come on, yeah, dude, like yeah, but but bro, I'm telling you, like if you're over two fifty. I certainly recommend it just just for the health benefit alone, like uh, just just wellness, like overall well being, dude. It's it's such a difference. So that's and have you prepped with yet with one? Have you gone into prep with one yet? No, no. I, so, I'm only I'm only a month in. <laughs> you'll look forward to this. It's like the best part of prep. Like you're, you're near the end of the day, you've eaten all your food. Like for me, I would like sometimes smoke a cigar or something before I go to bed. And yeah. uh, and then I would like go into my room and I'd like turn on the sound maker and get my CPAP and it I'd be it'd be going all this cold air and I put this like beanie on this cold beanie and then it's like it's like going into a hyperbaric chamber you just like <laughs> get this oxygen and like the world shuts off I put my like headphones on or whatever and it's I feel like I'm an astronaut like I'm being, <laughs> I'm being preserved I'm being preserved for the next day I'm going into my cryo chamber and it, like I would look forward to it so much. <laughs> My my AC so runs twenty four seven, and like I need it at this point because it just goes like, yeah, you need that like, sound. It, it's so soothing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's so it's so good, man. Like I'll be honest, at this point, I'm like, man, this CPAP air feels fresher than the regular air. Yeah, day. it does. <laughs> it really I, does. I just want this air all the time, you know. <laughs> Bro, uh, speaking of air all the time, like that concept, right? Like, when I would have those episodes where I'm like, fuck, I can't breathe, I will literally go try to fucking put my mouth in front of the air conditioner. The air. <laughs> <laughs> air. Come on, fuck, get something through, get something through. Wait, you, you got a CPAP too now, Joe? No, I was, telling, I was telling Ken, like, I'm at that point where I'm kind of past delusion. Like, oh, I need one. Like, I, how I was there. making excuse as to it was everything else. And now you know okay. what, Joe, like... Yeah, Joe, Man, if no. you're do it from your insurance, but if you can't get it through your insurance, let me know. Um, Scott, Scott, help me. Um, and we went through Lofta, so if you can't, just let me know and I'll, I'll help you out. Yeah, no, I'll definitely, yeah. I'm definitely gonna need some help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, so Brett, 
What's up? Sorry, I'm so late. I literally am like <laughs> finishing up moving. Wait, yeah, that's wait. crazy. You're moving during prep, bro. That's wild. That's yeah. what Justin said. Yeah, yeah. But luckily, I had a lot of friends help me, so it's good. Yeah, but that that like just mentally, I I don't I don't have that kind of brain energy, bro. You know yeah. what? It's been a week. I fucked my car up. So oh, what? I don't have what a happened? car now, right now. Holy what shit. happened? Um, where we live now, it's it's embarrassing, dude. But there's like a bunch of freaking poles, like tiny little poles that blend in. And oh. I like backed out and I'm like on my way to work and I'm like turning the car. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna watch out for this pole. And then next thing you know, I run into another pole and it was just like the whole front side of my driver's side. It, I'm pretty sure it warped the the uh, frame. So I'm waiting for insurance to get back to me. So Holy shit, bro. Holy uh, honestly, bro, though, I, I kind of deserve it because I was sitting here and I'm like, this prep's going like way too perfect. Like, what's going on? Oh, and, <laughs> so I kind of set myself up for that. That really where, is the time. where are you moving from and to? I moved from Laguna Niguel to Mission Viejo. Okay. I, I don't really know any of the places. It's all, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> How far is that from, uh, let's just say, Paul's house? 45 minutes without traffic. So it's pretty much like Irvine. Yeah. Like distance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah. I, I, okay, so I, as far as prep goes, where, where you at now? As far as uh, as far as cardio, calories, um, carbs. I'm at 30 minutes of cardio now, five times a week. I, I don't know what my calories are at. I just saw Justin kind of drop my food again a little bit. Okay. So your face I was up really slimmed down since last time I saw you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome, how many? Uh, uh, how many carb meals about? You want me to just read off what I'm eating? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be eating. That's easy. Um, right now he has me doing 50 grams of whey with 80 grams cream of rice. Then um, seven ounce chicken breast, 225 grams rice. Seven ounce lean beef, 150 grams rice. Eight ounce chicken breast, 150 grams rice. Eight ounce chicken, 150 rice. 120 greens, eight ounce lean beef, no rice, 120 greens, and then post workout is 50 grams whey, 80 grams cream of rice. That was six six meals. Seven. That was like four. That was like four or five times what Mady's eating. Uh, that, <laughs> that's that, four. That, 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 that sounded pretty. That, that sounded pretty nice. That, that <laughs> yeah. sounded, I just well, saw that, babies, his mind just like fuck me. <laughs> that that's not even my high. That's not even my high day. My 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 high day would be would be like half of that. But my my high day is about two two fifty protein and a uh, hundred hundred carbs is my high day. Damn, holy crap! Fuck? Yeah, it's not really a high day, right? It's just not a it's not a hell day. It's not a zero day. That's not, Grant, yeah, would you, not a zero day. Would you say prep is difficult for you? Because like, we all like, you know, just because you're being fed, that doesn't mean you don't feel what like I would feel with way less food. It's just because I know there's a certain point where, because me and Paul did the same show together, right? Yeah. And when I felt really bad, so did he, and he had way more food than me. So it's like a, there's a certain dynamic, like, just because you're eating more, your metabolism is utilizing it, so you're burning the same amount. Like you're still as efficient. So, but you you seem to like yeah. you seem to have more energy though. That's that's why I'm asking this close to the show. Um, I feel like you've always been that way since I've known you, though. Yeah, I feel like it's just because a lot happened. I mean, in life, really, and the, so I'm like very stimulated right now. Um. I am pretty like exhausted mentally and physically, but I'm not like dying in the trenches yet. You know, um, that's why I was in my own head. Like this is going like way too good. Like I'm looking too yeah. good for me personally and where I'm at and how I feel um, cognitively and everything. The only thing that was, I could tell that was, you know, 
me kind of going through it or struggling or, you know, whatever words you want to use is just in my lifts. Like I've just noticed that like my lifts are a lot harder. Um, I'm a lot more gassed and like, it's harder, it's harder for me to like catch my breath and come back. Um, and then a check-in that happened like shortly after that, I was flattening out. So Justin upped my carbs. So I feel like right after that, I just went straight back to just like feeling a little better. Yeah. Cause like everything's still good. Like in the most, I don't know if my girlfriend's parents watch this, but like my drive's still good. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, and like so, it's not. I'm, I'm not suffering really right now. Um, but I'm still Isn't like that fucked up. The the mind game that plays though, like it even is, myself, it is. like because I was suffering literally, or you can call it suffering around seven weeks out for USA's prep, and then I felt fine all the way up until like three and a half, four weeks out this prep. And I, I remember telling Paul like, "Isn't that fucked up, dude? Like when you feel if you're feeling too good and you're like." I don't think I'm going to be ready. Like, I, I don't think we're, we're on track. Cause I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't feel fucking terrible. Like, so yeah, how yeah, it's yeah. fucked up. You would want there, to feel good. You know? <laughs> there, there's different kinds of feeling like shit though. Right. Yeah. There's low body fat feeling like shit where anybody who gets in shape is going to feel like shit because they have no body fat. Right. That's one thing, but there's a difference when you have, that low body fat, but you're literally starving. Mm -hmm. like, not not like bodybuilding starving, but but literally starving, right? And then the fatigue that builds up from the amount of cardio is also a different kind of fatigue, right? So yes, it's equal as far as when we're all very lean, we all feel like shit from low body fat. But if you feel like shit from low body fat, but you still have to do two hours of cardio and you're like, you, you have to cry yourself to sleep because like you're you're literally like Jones and like a crack addict for food. Th that is different. It's still very different, even though you, you, you both of you will feel like shit to some extent. Right. Are you crying yeah, yourself to sleep right now? <laughs> I, 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 I'm just smoke. I'm just smoking a bunch until I pass out, basically, at that point. <laughs> so I, I'll sit there and smoke until I pass the fuck out. You know, but yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so I, I think that's the difference. That's why a lot of people are like, yeah, we all feel like shit because we're all lean. Mm -hmm. you know? But mm -hmm. how you get there, there's a big difference. The amount of fatigue your body builds up uh, for the entire prep. That's why some people, oh, these guys should do more shows. Not everybody can do more shows. You can do more shows if your body can hold up. But what some people have to do to get in shape, their body cannot hold up to do five shows there's just not it's just not possible for everybody right so well, it's Justin like just talked about would... that he had to call it before the amateur olympia because his body just yeah he couldn't just take anymore don't respond yeah so sometimes i get annoyed with some of the old school guys when they when they keep saying this guy should just do more like you have no idea what what's going on in this person's life and what it takes for them to get in shape it, it, it's not that simple. Everybody yeah, can just do a bunch of shit. No, there's no, there's no contracts anymore, too. I, I hate when people yep. say that. And what's like, the benefit? What am I getting out of it's it? It's coming out of your pocket. It's coming straight out of your pocket. Yeah. Ke Kevin Laroni just talked like he he said something about how like back then when you were on Weeder's team or whatever, he they, that guy really paid for everybody that was in the top five Olympia yeah. to do everything. Yeah. It, it's different. You you can't you can't say these things. Like you say these things to make yeah. you feel good about yourself, or your it, it doesn't make sense. It, it's it's a very different time. This is forty years into the future. Things have changed. Like what what benefit would some of these guys get doing these, just doing a bunch of shows just for the fuck of it, for your entertainment? It's my fucking life, not you know, not your life at the end of the day. I don't know. I, I think it's a weird thing to tell somebody else that they should do more shows that. That doesn't really make sense. The, I would think the goal would be you want to be successful enough that you don't have to, right? Like Derek Lunsford should do the Arnold. I would hope that Derek Lunsford is making so much money that he doesn't need the the, the Arnold check. From, that that would be that would be my hope. From a viewership and attendee perspective, yes, it makes sense. You want the top guys there, but only one person is making the purse that day. So if you're not in contention for that purse. Sometimes the ROI of doing that show is just not worth it because 
it's money coming out of your pocket unless you have really, really good sponsors that are willing to upset the cost for you to attend these shows. Like, uh, I think we talked That's about a good it before, point. Tim, Tim Budesheim, right? Um, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's been in the United States for three months already, and he's still here. It's like, I don't know if it's his money or if it's some of his sponsor's money, but most people cannot afford to do that, right? Like, I don't know. it's it's not it's not a very common thing. So when you say, oh, Tim or Emil Morajic should go do Chicago, the guy, Amir, has got to come fly back over here, <laughs> stay in a hotel over here, food, everything, and then do the show. Who's and praying like, for how this? Much, how much did it cost him to do New York or Chicago and, and Cali to begin with? And he's got to double that that money again and come do it here yeah. just because he came he came second or third. It's like sometimes the ROI is just not worth it. You made the best point because when people say these things like, bro, 500 grand, bro, bro, 50 grand. That's one person, motherfucker. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're, you're telling 10 people they should do this show because 500 grand. Those 10 people aren't in contempt contempt to, to win the show. No. It's gonna be if if Nick is there, Samson is there, hot it's gonna be those guys. So everybody yeah. else is not getting any return, right? Or very, very little return. So it's like the, the idea that oh the prize money is up, but that's one person. It, you know, they they didn't raise the prize money for tenth place. You know? So I only two, the only two shows that I would always say, okay, go for those two shows regardless of if you don't place to win yeah. is the Arnold and the Olympia, because those are the biggest of the biggest. And then at least there's eyeballs on you. You have opportunity, but for any other show during the year, just to say, go do this, go do this, go do this. Like the ROI sometimes, if you're not in contention to win, the ROI is just not there. Yeah. All right. Did we do any questions? Did, did, did we do a question yet? Or? No. 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 We, <laughs> Okay. We we talking about seatbelts and then Brett crashed the party. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm Blake. Blake. Nice to meet you, buddy. It's my first nice time. Nice to meet you too, dude. Oh, I nice see you. It. Sick physique too. I, I checked. I checked you out after uh, the last time you were on the pod. So. Oh, thank physique. you. I'm pretty small. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all say. We all say that to each other. I told you. I told you. <laughs> Brett, Brett also does the, the deep, deep tissue massage work and stuff. So, do do oh, uh, no. are you mobile? Are you mobile? I am, yeah. Okay, so well, just... not right now because my car is. I was say what, uh, <laughs> but I yeah. Well, we were mo we were mobile. We did a back double next to each other, and we did the little the little arm fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, Brett, Brett worked on me recently, and um, my my left lat and rhomboid and trap were kind of locked up, and he did a good job opening it up. Like my back there was really good. I was able to activate it, no problem. So I do recommend them. What's the best place to reach reach you for for that, Brett? My Instagram works. Yeah, okay. uh, Apex Brett. I'm gonna Apex put it in Brett. the description, yeah. Brett. Description box. But also, uh, wait, what area you said you live again? I live in South Orange County. Okay, well, so if you're Orange in that County. area, yeah, hit up Brett. All right. Where will will there be a live podcast? On oh, post up, USA. On up job, you guys meet at Texas. I guess talking about oh, Texas. I'm, I'm going to Texas. I'm going to Texas to hang out, man. I'm not trying to work, but if there's like a, a like a crew in place already, like some kind of camera crew, and they're filming a podcast already, I wouldn't mind. Hey, how much? How much you want? And I, I'll, I'll run that. <laughs> if there's no work for me, but I'm trying to chill, man. I feel I'm bad, busy. man. I can't come, guys. I can't come. Oh. Yeah, that's all right. Th that's supposed to be my third time in Texas too within the last three months because I'm going again in. in it's not now, okay. About three weeks. But I, have an, <laughs> I, have an, I have an event for Animal, so. I'll oh, oh that's that. that's a different story. But the Animal, that, okay. Work. Yeah, yeah, it's work. It's work. Yeah. I like Animal. All right. What's the biggest post show meal that you've ever had? Damn. Oh. Three pizzas. I, I can start. I, I mean, like, what's the time frame? Like, one sitting? Yeah, one sitting. Yeah, one sitting. Oh, yikes. What's that place called? What's the Italian well, place called? Can it be like the whole night? Would one, one night? 
be like what did you stop or did you stop eating if you stop it don't count you, you got to be continuously okay <laughs> so like let's say i traveled from the restaurant back to the hotel room that works that works yeah yeah, okay. yeah that extended dessert yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the, that's what you it is. <laughs> I, I have a bad story about this <laughs> oh yikes we're gonna get to that in a second no, but um, is it Boca de, de Pepo? That's the Italian Buc spot? Buca, Buca de Pepo. Okay. So I went, got a large, or not a large, got a pizza. It's family style, so they bought the whole pizza, right? And I ate that. Then I was like, let me get the lasagna. And she was like, oh, it's family style. It was just me and my ex. She, I was like, that's cool. And she Wait, was it. that after the California? Yeah, yeah, actually, was. yeah, yeah. It was. Oh, I, I saw you there. Okay, yeah. For yeah. real? Did, yeah, did, did I was you say something? Nacho. Did we talk? I was, a, I was a Nacho. Oh, Nacho. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did talk to Nacho. We we didn't talk though that, that day. I probably didn't recognize no. you. All right. Yeah. So so he, yeah, uh, Brett was there to witness the. <laughs> yeah, he the fucking a lot. disgustingness. So yeah, <laughs> then I was like, "Have they ever finished this?" And she was like, "A lot of big guys come and they say they're gonna eat it and they never do." And that rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, why she said like that? Big guys? What yeah. The fuck you yeah, like, you know, that's what it means. So I ate the whole thing, obviously. And honestly, it wasn't even that. I wasn't even full after that. You know, um, I, I think it, we lasagna? had the butter. Huh? How big was this lasagna? It was, it was legit family style. But at that point, man, uh, I don't really carve up much. So I, I, I had just been starving for the last 30 weeks, man, just literally starving for the last 30 weeks. So it was endless hole. I kind of, I, I kind of kept eating, man. It's one of those things. When you're that deep in the hole, your, your brain, that sensory is completely gone. It, it, it yeah. doesn't exist. So you'll, you'll be able to eat like you, you could do, you could really put yourself in a hospital, you know? And, and I was on Ozempic actually, because <laughs> I, I, yeah, because, because I knew, I knew if I wasn't on it, I would be in the hospital because oh, I, I, I knew how I, at that point I, I didn't care. I just wanted to eat. So I, I, I knew I, I, I know myself enough to know that in that position that day, I wouldn't have been able to control myself because the 30 weeks is just too long. Uh, mentally, I, I was broken already by that point. So there was no way <laughs> I, that was going to happen. And, and, and you, you can accept it. I, I accept it. I'm broken. There's no fixing this. This is going to happen. And I, yeah. and I just went for it. Yeah, it is what it is, right? So <laughs> we all hardcore, Man. but I, I know my breaking point, and that was it. There was I, 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 I couldn't die for one more day. <laughs> but yeah, that that was the most uh, most I ate, you know. And um, I don't know if, if I should be proud or disgusted. Proud, it's, it's proud. Is what it is. <laughs> it is, what it is. <laughs> disgustingly yeah. proud. Yeah, Ken, <laughs> Ken probably had a, Ken probably had a good one because Ken got to starve too, though. Yeah, no, I I don't have any. I've attempted, but I realize like when I get to the actual spot to eat, you know, your stomach has shrunk so much that it's like, man, I I can't eat. Like like after North American right? I fucking starved to, <laughs> to to get there, and uh, it's weird. Pittsburgh, nothing is open. Like everything shuts down at like nine or ten p.m. at night um, on Saturdays, so there was only one pizza spot open in the entire town. So we drove there, and they had like these massive, like I think it was like fifty inch pizzas. Oh. So yeah, it was like massive. Like some of those ones you see Furious Pete used to eat, like those massive. You would just put it on the table, like massive ones. So it was fifty inch. And uh, my dumbass, right, thinking, oh, I just, I just fucking won this show. Like, I'm mad hungry. Let's get two of those. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you had so much salt and cheese. So, you dude, are, bro. <laughs> I got halfway through that pie, and I thought I was going to die, bro. The first one, I got halfway through it, and I said, no way, dude. If I continue, I'm not leaving Pittsburgh. I'm not going home tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to the cemetery. Uh, so, so that's, that was the last time. Uh, usually no. I just have like a, uh, I usually just have like a T-bone steak with potatoes. That's usually my post comp meal. I feel like that's, that's decent enough where I don't feel, I don't feel bad after I have it. And I feel kind of satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Uh, one thing I learned is just, uh, if you get a bunch of fluid in you, you, you won't be able to eat as much. And you like three so, liters. 
Yeah, yeah. So that that that, that was a good way. Or even like get a bunch of fluid and get a protein shake. You know, I remember Stu before he he went out to eat and then he had like a big ass bowl of oatmeal before he had the cheat meal, which sounds counterintuitive, right? But at that point, he knew that he could still eat the fucking cheat meal, just not as much now because he just had a bowl of oatmeal. So I'm like, that kind of ruins the lasagna a bit for me, but it would limit me to not eating the whole fucking yeah. family yeah. lasagna, right? <laughs> which is, <laughs> which could be, you know, and if you go as far as do do this and actually not cheat, maybe have one cheat meal and hold off till the following week and then pick out, you would have a, a, a much better rebound, you know? Or do what Joe does and just actually stay on a diet would be the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I'm going to do for the first time. I'm going to have the cheat meal and the breakfast, and then I'm going to go right back on diet. You know, I'm I'm hungry this prep, obviously, but I don't have any cravings. So just more food, I'm good. I, and I'm, I'm actually starting to like being a little hungry. You're a little more focused. If you're brain dead, at least before you eat, you're actually more. Does that make sense? I'm actually more yeah. focused before I eat. When I eat, I kind of want to sit down for a minute, you know, because yeah, like yeah. Joe said, the relativity, relativity, even though the food is so, so low, that actually makes the food more to you after a while. If that makes sense, right? Like your stomach, 12 your stomach it, shrinks. Your stomach shrinks. Yeah, so, but like my body's bones. reaction to it, right? So yeah. it's like in off season, one meal is 1,200 calories. Now that's for the day. But obviously, it doesn't feel like that. When I have, like, you know, I'll have, let's say if I have my beef meal, a bunch of mushrooms, a bunch of onions, greens on it. When I'm done, I'm full. I'm not satiated, but I'm physically full. My stomach is actually full. And now I've been doing fiber lies, and I sip on it all day, and it fills me up. I, I let it swell up really bad. And then I drink it, and then it swells. Oh me up. man, you you let you let it coagulate in the in the bottle. I let it drink? coagulate. Oh, I, I let it turn that. into a fucking yeah. Joke. It's disgusting. Oh but man, a, that that is gross, bro. Like, that's very like, gross. Dude, that's dude, where we at. I right try now. to drink <laughs> it before it starts to solidify. You like, can't really drink it. If this shit solidifies, I can't take it anymore. Like you well, shake, really, shake, shake, shake. that that, right, that used to happen with my intro workout of Vitargo. Oh, yeah, they, that, that that does swell up. Bro, it, it literally grosses bro. me out. Like I'm out well, of fuck. Joe, bro, imagine fiber lies, fiber lies, dude. It's straight jello, bro. Like yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Leave it in the bottle and it settles. It becomes oh. like, it's, well, it's not even like it's not liquid anymore. No, no, it, it's to the point that I have to have a water bottle. So it's in my shaker bottle, right? And I'll sip yeah. it or fucking chew it. What the fuck you want to call it? <laughs> and then I gotta. <laughs> I got to pour more water in it. Like after every sip, I'll pour more. It's just grossing me out. Just to, but, but, but think about it. Think about how much fuller that keeps me. Right? I, All I that think it's more of a, I don't even know if it's necessarily fuller. It's the concept of eating it. Compared <laughs> yeah, to eating it. That's awesome. I'm like, this is the same shit, bro, going down. It's just, yeah, no, no, no. You can add a little bit of chew action. No, here's the thing. If I have it while it's still thin, my stomach doesn't fill out, though. If that makes sense, right? It will because that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed yeah, to yeah, but, but, solidifies but, but, inside your stomach. Inside you're inside you, so it it it, it coats yeah. your colon, so you can actually take mm -hmm. a dump, and yeah. it's a lot easier. But well, in your mind, you you you've turned it into. If I eat this, it's, solid, a, it's a snack. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I, I'm, I'm a saying. little fruit, fruit disc. A little fruit disc. <laughs> oh, 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 what I'm for bed. <laughs> What I'm saying is it's going to satiate you more, right? That's like if I have my dry oatmeal, yeah, it'll swell up before I digest it at some point once it, it, it hits the fluid. But when it's when it's swollen as you're eating it, it's more satiating to you, right? Because it's going down and filling filling up your stomach as it goes down. Right? So it's like I, I, I get that. I don't know about that, bro. I don't know about that. If have you have dry oatmeal and you drink water, it's going to feel like fucking lead in your stomach, bro. Like, I don't know what you're talking about here. What? what <laughs> I'm speaking from experience because I, I, I've done both. I, I, I've drank the fiber life. I've drank the fiber life flat already, but when I drink yeah. it full, it, it fills me up. You know, so it's just, it's just, it, it, it's, it just keeps me. It's like the, you guys don't put extra water in your cream of rice and oatmeal. I was gonna say, yeah, same, same idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll eat it thicker than in off season where it's more liquidy and I feel like it can go down easier. Well, the, 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 that's my whole point. Same difference, right? Same yeah. amount, but but you're let you're eating get swollen up so that you have more to eat, right? Or more so, to drink, chew, you're whatever. You're savoring so, it. So yeah. 
Yeah, so that's really oats, what it is. Like, yeah. The oats, the oats in, in in prep, I make my oats a lot more watery because that's more volume. It, it's yeah, not that yeah. it's it's thicker. It's just volume of the liquid in your stomach, so it actually feels like you're eating more versus if you eat it kind of dry. So, what I'm trying to say, man, your analogy is not really is not really checking out here. But you're in prep, so I'm gonna let you. <laughs> I'm gonna let that oh. happen. <laughs> well, like what Justin I, said, uh, what am I you do weird well. shit in prep. You just do weird shit. Yeah. And even you if you weird things, I was, I was buying five world. pounds of cucumbers a week and peeling them and slicing them and putting like Splenda and cinnamon on them. <laughs> Wait, it. so so if you guys were starving, would you rather drink a, a, a just straight liquid water, I, I or would, would you rather do what you're doing? It makes sense I, to me. I, I get it because I've started, I, 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 I've, I've done what you've done. I've done yeah. what you've done with the fiber lies, but I didn't do it more than like two times. Yeah, that, 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 that's, 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 that's like, this is not it. But, but think it, about it, you're talking, that, you're talking to us, right? None of us are in prep, but Brett. So yeah. like the thought of this is grossing me the fuck out. But oh, I can okay, understand yeah. if I, I see, didn't yeah, use them like, like, hey, that's a good fucking idea, man. Brett's like, like yeah, Brett's yeah, like yeah, making different. it right now under the camera. He's like, yeah, because I do like Jello. He would just said Jello. I'm like, that's that's kind of a turn on for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah cause, cause in off season you would want the opposite. And and, and off season I want Oh no, I'd still eat Jello in the off season. Oh yeah, you do? <laughs> <laughs> and and off season I want everything like thin, right? Like thinner and just get it yes. down, right? And it usually tastes better thinner because I don't know, more flavor, I guess. It's not distributed. I don't know. It's usually better that way, but like um and prep everything. Uh, I'll overcook the cream of rice on purpose, and obviously it rises. And then I'll add more water, right? And then mix it again. And then at forty grams, it's yeah, more yeah, volume. Yeah. It's just more yeah, yeah. volume, right? So like even if, even like for me in prep, right? Like my my veggies in prep, I would have like more yeah, spinach too. right during sure. prep because the spinach and the rice, then you eat and then you have some water or fluid. It kind of volumizes in your in your yeah, actual yeah. stomach, so you feel more satiated. Uh, nice. that, that's what I was trying to say, like with the with the oats and stuff, right? So it's the same concept. You you make it a lot more liquid because the liquid, when it sits in your stomach, it's volumizing versus just a little bit of a thicker a thicker paste. There's not there's less volume in there, so so that's that's what yeah, I was yeah. saying in terms of like prep hacks and stuff. But yeah, we can carry on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What was that question? Biggest post show meal? Did everybody go? No, nobody went. No, Ken just went. You and oh, Ken let's went. Go. Let's go, Joe. Uh, I guess it was this last one. I didn't like go off the rails, like, but it was more so like I don't think I've ever eaten as much in one sitting post show. So we went to Cheesecake Fest. Well, so right when I got off stage, I had a, a bunch of sweets made for us. And I wanted to make sure I didn't fucking overdo it. So I literally, it was like a box. You saw it, baby. Um, mm-hmm. Darlene brought it. Um, yeah. We took a bite of every single thing she made to try every single thing. <laughs> um, and then uh, the Buckeye brownies, I had a bite of one of each of those. So I had all that. And then we go to Cheesecake Factory after. And... Uh, the wait was two hours, so I had time to like set a little bit. But then uh, when it came to us eating, they had that delicious bread, and I probably like it may not sound like much, but the, you know the, the like dark one. Mm-hmm. I, I probably had at least three of those to myself with butter, and then I had a uh, avocado egg rolls. I had at least six of those, and then I had a, a ribeye steak with mashed potatoes this like side of it was pretty good amount of mac and cheese and then this oh, big ass fucking plate of uh sweet potato fries i'm out i'm gonna have to head I out while you tell the story yeah. <laughs> and then i had uh, i only <laughs> i i barely made a dent in the sweet potato fries because my stomach was so fucked and bloated i was like fuck i'm gonna get this carrot cake though so i got a big ass carrot cake and i ate that mm. whole thing and then uh, Jalista's, um, she was like, I would say there was like a fourth left of her cheesecake, and I ate that, and that was that was it for the day. But I was fucking miserable. Damn. Like, I'm like, don't talk to me. <laughs> you know, th- like that that kind of 
in my head, it's like a motivating factor, like not having any cheat meals and prep. Just the idea of how much better is going to taste kind of gets me hyped, right? You know, it's a yeah, it's it's the best, bro. I always I look forward to that every fucking show, just because Justin never really gives them the cheat meals. Yeah, no. So, like with um, my beef meal is my favorite meal. So now it's like I'm like it's getting late, but I want to have it post workout just because. It motivates me more for the workout when I know I have my favorite meal waiting at home, right? Is, is that weird? Like that, no. that makes, makes me want to. That's how I felt about cream of rice. I get that. It was, it was like literally the dessert of the day after a workout. And I don't know why, my whole career, I've always had a sweet tooth post workout. So to have that cream of rice, it was just everything for me. <laughs> yeah, you, you see what I mean? Okay, because think about this. If I, if I have it right now, wow, that was so good. Well, okay, now let's go train. There's nothing left to look forward to. Yeah, like, it's it. Yeah, I go train. I do cardio. Okay. I guess I got some tilapia. Like, you know, it's not the same. Whereas if you, like, training, oh, my God, I'm going to go get this beef meal. He's fucking pushing harder, and he's done. He's driving home. you smiling. Ah, yeah. I'm going to eat some fucking, you know? So it, it just sets up the day more catered toward relaxing your brain. You know, Bro, you got to think, you gotta think about this. It things. sounds it's, it's actually motivating. Like man, I do this shit. I earn that fucking that. <laughs> it's fucked up. One hundred percent. And then everything got to be perfect. If I fuck up the rice, I'm like, this shit is too dry. No, cook it up. It's getting cooked all, all over again. I'm not eating that dry rice. That rice has to be perfect every time. So nobody can cook my food for me in prep because if it's off by a little bit, that's not gonna work. And I don't want to be an asshole and be like. Why is this not crispy, you know? So I got to handle all my own shit, you know? What happened, hey, Ken? man, I've said this before, baby. Get a rice cooker. Your rice is always going to be perfect, bro. But, but it's, the, it's the opposite, bro. It's, I swear it's the opposite. My rice is so much better when I cook it. Because it, it's a... <laughs> Because he, he, he's like, like that one mom, like, ain't nobody makes he's, spaghetti like he's me. He's so <laughs> stubborn, bro. He's so hey, stubborn. Hey, <laughs> no, baby, I get you. We... Uh, anytime me or Danielle makes my rice, it's always in the pot. And yeah, it yeah. comes out way better than I've ever experienced it from like a rice cooker. You and know why they, they can't relate? It's more fluffy. It's more fluffy to me. You, you know why they can't relate? I figured it out. Because they can't cook. Oh. People, <laughs> people, people who can cook get it right away. Because it has to be so perfect that I can't even leave it up to the rice cooker to decide how perfect my rice is. I have to go, but the same way my uh, my, my boy was like, yo, just air fry your tilapia. Nah. And it looked great. I thought I'm doing it. Like, that looks really good. But I have to have it this exact same way, and it cannot change. So, That's you know, how I feel so about cream of rice. Like, literally, I will not like, I don't care about beef. I don't care about chicken, the texture of regular rice. I don't give a fuck about none of that. My cream of rice has to be perfect every time, or I'll be upset. Yeah. I'll be super Both. upset. <laughs> this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is like news to me. I, I, I'll be honest. I, I almost want to make a, I almost want to pull on this. Like, do yeah. people feel that like cooked rice is better than rice from a rice cooker? I, I'm so curious because what what what? what, what of the year. It, you know, the, I grew up, the, like my mom cooked my mom cooked rice, right? Like she never believed in like a rice cooker because she because she could cook. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the rice was good. Don't get me wrong. The rice was good, but I'm, I'm just saying. Water. Now, you know, my, when, when you I go to the rice cooker, man, it's always perfect, bro. When you when you post these polls, you have to ask a follow up question: Are you a good cook? Because same thing <laughs> with, with the chicken breast. Like anytime I tell somebody, "Yo, this chicken breast slaps." They automatically think it's impossible because they can't make it slap like that. So it, for, from their point of view, chicken breast is going to taste like shit. But if you if you crack the chicken breast code, code then you 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 know you, you kind of figure it out. You know what I'm saying? But but as, as far as the rice, it's not even that it's better for everybody. It just tastes better for me. Just right? your style, I th I, exactly. Bro, I think, I, but I think it's the same with anything, bro. Like, okay, look, when you make something. With a little bit of love, it's always going to taste better than something manufactured. Yeah. Like, so yeah. Baby's probably right. His rice is probably fucking amazing. What I get off on is how fucking I don't have to do shit. I'm just oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I yeah, yeah. I'm over here like my shit in Gross. my head tastes so good because I don't got to do shit. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, literally have, I literally have rice sitting in there. We've been potting out for how long? I'm going to get on bro. Pot, <laughs> go get my rice out of the rice yeah. cooker, and I'm good to go, you know? I'm yeah, yeah. Sure. Now, now off-season, I'm definitely going to use it. Well, I don't even use the rice cooker. I, I just buy the frozen rice from Trader Joe's. But off-season, you don't. Nobody get well. You got the off season right now, right? So, off season, you you know you don't give a fuck about that kind of shit. You just you just eat the food, whatever is most convenient, right? I would say off season because I I don't put any work in my food off season. I just make the food for the most part. You know, you know, uh, uh, you, know you get to that point off season where like, so you say you 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 make food easier to go down and stuff, right? Like you mm -hmm. you're not hungry for it, so you don't really enjoy it as much and all that shit. Because of the way that he's doing things with me this time, I'm not going to lie, bro. It's pretty fucking amazing when the food's kind of high, but not crazy high to where you're pushing it. And, like, Perfect. you're actually hungry for each meal and stuff. Like, but I don't have cravings, but, like, the thought of having a cheap meal is pretty cool. Like, I'm like, you know what? I still enjoy it. This is the best. This is the best, bro. That, that's the best just, spot to just, be in. Justin, how do you, Justin, how do you cook your rice? I have a, <laughs> I have a Japanese, I have a Japanese rice cooker that keeps it warm uh, for like, my, my man, like seventy two hours. <laughs> my man, my hey, what man. did you say you do? You put um a wax paper between mm -hmm. the pot and the machine, yeah, and it protector. doesn't overcook the the rice as it mm -hmm. stays warm. Mm -hmm. I want to yeah, try yeah. that because I do hate how like you leave it there and like that That's top layer kind of hardens off, yeah, you know, hardens up, yeah, yeah. I, I I would definitely say that there's way more people using rice cookers and air fryers than anything else. I would say, you know, Joe, that top yeah. layer wouldn't get hard if you just cooked it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> or or you could just turn it off and then just warm your I gotta rice have, I, I gotta have Brett on on more often. I gotta have Brett more on more. Often. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I I I completely lose my shit. And I'm so anal with everything, but it, it's it's the weird the weirdest thing, man. Every little detail, the timing, the amount of if I if I let it sit there too long, every little thing just I I, I just obsess over, you know. Because to keep in mind, the less you have, the more you know. If you're in jail, you fucking you, you have a toothbrush and you're, it's so important to you. Yeah, because that's yeah. all you fucking have. I I so, buy a new frying pan every prep. It's like that's the pan. That I'm that's like, the oh, pan, bro. Yeah. I buy like you guys I buy, like, all four. have a spoon. <laughs> Yeah, do you guys yeah, all have a special prep spoon? Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I got some. Yeah, you don't. I have a rice spoon. Me too. Yeah, I do too. We well, all do. You, you don't. It's you like don't a have. Spoon. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you don't have much you can control. You don't have much leeway. So every little detail it becomes just amplified to you. You know. I brought four different air fryers last breath. <laughs> four. <laughs> I got two. I was, over there. I was I was looking for the perfect one, bro. I was looking oh, for the perfect one. I know. And what brand's the perfect one? Ninja. Ninja. I knew you were gonna say that. I think that those motherfuckers are just magical. Yeah. I've been telling everybody I, I, I need to get a creamy. We have a creamy. creamy. I'm gonna get one. I'm going to buy one. I am for sure gonna buy one. 100%. I haven't used it yet because Danielle figured out the way to make it actually work. Like while I started prep, and I'm like, damn it. Man, Damn. I'm definitely yeah, gonna get it creamy. I saw somebody make make a fucking um it was probably Jordan, it was, bro. It was like <laughs> brownie bit shit, bro. Like yeah, yeah it was Jordan. Jordan. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a brownie with the whey paste and the fucking uh the the powder on top with the splendor with the ice cream scoop of the creamy that ice cream. That was probably like, fucking Robin. This motherfucker's creative like that too. Robin Strand. Bro, and, and it's like 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 six net carbs and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Damn. So my, you know, so I'm like, I could I could get down a brown off season. Probably tastes like shit. Right now, it's gonna taste great though. Yeah, it's gonna taste great. So I'm I'm definitely getting great. Uh, is it expensive, Brett? I don't think it is. Not for Christmas. It was on our Christmas I, list, and her parents got us it. Yeah, my girlfriend just uh, she, we just said uh, we just saw it on sale for like I think one sixty nine. Oh damn! I was gonna say, is yeah, anything that expensive that. when it changes your life? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I the only I'm reason why I the only reason why I don't want to get it is because you have to leave it overnight. Like if you were preparing, like one of those. Yeah. You know, you that part would fuck with me. Right? I'm like, dude, I want it now. Like 
I, I can't do this over that prep, you know? Yeah. You gonna forget. Why you gotta make them in advance. You gotta make like two or yeah. three at a time, put them in there, and then you're good yeah. to go. Bro, yeah. I, would, I, would I be crazy if I got one right now? I think I, I, think I want to yeah, do I it. I, I don't <laughs> see that. I don't see that hurting you anywhere, even in the off season. Like, I think it would help. Hey, you. The, the only thing, the only thing, Joe, is if I don't know what his diet is like, but if you don't have a lot of sugary stuff in your diet, you don't want to start putting in there, and then your taste buds, you're like, ah, oh, once you get that taste, bro, it's over. Just yeah, that, that's true. If it's you're not used you have to that to put sweet, like, you don't want to chase it. Yeah, you, know? you have to yeah, put yeah, like gelatin true. and like xanthium gum in it and stuff for it to like thicken and get that consistency uh, that you want. Nah, never mind. Never mind. Oh yeah, I, th- I, I thought you were just do whatever the fuck, and then whatever the machine does turns it into that consistency. No, I saw you have to, like, add I was... different things. Like some of them, it's like you add a little bit of like pudding powder, and it's like sugar-free pudding powder. So yeah, then you're, you're right, adding you're like right. those extra little things that you're like, do I really want this on prep? See, Brett, this already sounds like too much work, man. Yeah, yeah, you're hard. really fucking making me like. Oh, yeah, and if you're, yeah, if you're in off season, you're just going to go buy ice cream. Yeah, hey, yeah. but if, yeah. If, yeah. if you get one, I have a PDF yeah. with a bunch of ingredients and like how to do it. So you're good. <laughs> I'll send you it. I saw, I saw, I saw, shit. I saw a Sebum do it on prep. I'm pretty sh- he, I'm pretty sure he just did whey and then he did like uh, all the um, pumpkin puree. P- puree? I don't know. Some shit like pumpkin something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm saw the same no, one. I saw it. I'm not doing no yeah, puree. That, that, that was just to promote. That's just to promote his, his protein. His protein <laughs> hey, low key though, doing. have you guys ever tried yeah, his? Uh, plug. I've only tried his birthday cake one. That was really fucking good, bro. Very good. Like, very good. Like, birthday cake what? Really good. The the isolate, his isolate. I never tried the strawberry uh, one. I never got that, a chance. That to try was that, that was very good. The shortcake. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I want to try that. Like the three, the three months I was with her. Here you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this. Damn. Yeah. So that's that's two two hundred fifty five calories, eight grams of fat, thirty grams of carbs, and fifty three grams of protein. Yeah, pretty damn good. Oreos, Oreo cookies and cream, protein ice cream. Hmm. Well, the, Ore- the Oreos in there uh, is that the Oreos are the carbs. Food? They're probably the they're probably the thin uh, the, the thin gar- Oreos the garnish. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a garnish. <laughs> they put a fuck ton in the picture, but that's not how many are in there. That's not yeah. how many is gonna be in there, bro. Like no, three, no. Ore- three Oreo cookies is like, dude, it's like Come a on, shit ton. Like seventy grams of carbs. Come like on now, yeah, you <laughs> see. Oh, wait. I was when it starts, it starts getting creepy. Fuck you. <laughs> the the first day you make it, you make it, you know, nice and humble. Then you start adding more bits to it. You stop weighing it. Now you're like, oh, let me add a little extra Oreo bits. Yeah. All right, be careful. You know, the I think the best like dessert style thing where you could actually do it on prep as long as you digest it well is that anabolic French toast kind of stuff because it's just egg whites, bread. And depending on if you have fats, you can put peanut butter, or like sugar-free chocolate sauce and sugar-free syrup. That should taste good all the time. I'm so gross. What I would do is I would just put protein, like protein, mix it with some water, heat it up so it becomes like a little cake. Yeah, I would eat that. Like, that's funny. That, 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 that's what I would do. That, that was my. That was I would look forward some, to that every night. That's sometimes that's good. Sometimes I wouldn't even do the cake. I would just eat it like that, like the pudding. Like the paste, like yeah. I've done, yeah. I've done that, bro. Fudge. Not very yeah. filling, but yeah, it is what it is. Pour it, pour it on top of tilapia. <laughs> so, so I getting creepy. Put some splendor on it. All right. Oh, the one thing damn. I like with tilapia actually is cinnamon. Putting cinnamon on tilapia. Come that on. That tastes pretty damn good. Come on, that's that's that sounds disgusting. Now we're getting we- now we're getting weird. Yeah, now 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 we get. <laughs> hey, don't knock until you try it, bro. Don't knock until you try it. Baby's on prep and he still says no. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that that's dangerous. Yeah, that's dangerous. I, I don't say no to much on prep. Oh damn! But everybody didn't go yet. Oh, Justin, let's go, Fred, Justin. Fred and Justin, yeah. Craziest post so. My first Social show was man. my was my worst experience, and I learned my lesson. <laughs> so, 
This is going to be this is going to sound crazy. 2016, uh, Chris Tuttle was my coach and first prep. Didn't know anything about bodybuilding. Didn't know anything about rebounding. Nothing. Did my first show. Got fourth place. Um, and I wanted a whole litany of things after the show. So there's this donut shop in Connecticut called Crazy Donuts. We got 12 of them. They're 1,200 calories each. I ate Ooh. six of them when I got off stage. Oh, okay. I'm boy. on the way to my favorite pizza restaurant in New Haven. It was mm-hmm. so it was so crowded that you couldn't even go in. So I ordered the pizzas to go. Three of them opened my trunk because it was raining. Stood under my trunk and ate them with my Attaboy. wife. I ate most of it, so three pizzas. And then we were driving. We went home, and I had a Reese's ice cream cake waiting for me. Ooh, 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 ooh. So I tucked into mm. that. I ate like half of it. And then I had uh, some brownies that my wife made. And then I had like an industrial size of Cocoa Puffs. I poured mm-hmm. it into a salad bowl. And then I did like, yes. a, I did, like a gallon of milk. And like as, yep. I was, as I was laying there, I was like having a hard time breathing. And then my vision started to get blurry. And then oh. I was like, I was like freaking out. And uh, I called Chris and I told him like everything that I'd done. He's like, well, first of all, stop. That's stupid. And he's like, if it gets worse, you need to go to the hospital because you're there's Damn. something going on here. And uh, dude, so and I was like drinking so much water. The next day when I went to go to work, I couldn't get my feet into my shoes because they were they were so oh. they were so they were so swollen. I don't know if you can if I can like focus this. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yes. Uh, I wait, tell yeah. me again. I need to see that. Yeah, it is. Damn. Oh. Edema. Let me see. <laughs> Enhanced edema. That's what we call that. Yeah. One. Yeah. That, that, that's good. Oh, that's wow. going. That, that's going in the fucking textbook right there. Right <laughs> under. Right yeah. under edema. Oh. Thirty pounds in in less than twenty four hours. Wow. Damn. I think. I think me and Justin just became best friends, man. <laughs> so I never. Yeah. Obviously, I've never so ever did that again. <laughs> I'll take notes. I felt I'm, so bad. I'm doing that for my car boat. For USA. You know, I, I was always afraid. Like, I've always limited myself, literally, like, so the day after this, or the dinner after the show. So I'll stick to that dinner. You can only eat so much. And then the next day, I'll do a breakfast, like one or two bodybuilding meals, depending on the breakfast size, and then a dinner and dessert. And then that's it. So I, I'll usually range between. I would say 10 and 15 pounds each show that I, I, I put on by the, that Monday. Like this last one, I only put on 10 pounds. It wasn't with that big meal. Just, I'm a bigger guy now. So my body can. It's also so different food. because you're bigger now. You eat so much yeah. food on show day. Like I'm not even hungry at the end of the day. It's like, yeah, I want to yeah. eat meal, but I, I ate 400 grams of rice six times a day. I don't want to eat anything else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. That's true. yeah I, I haven't had one of those carb ups, but. I might now with a coach, hopefully. You will on uh, like two days out. You'll start carving up one or two days. Okay, well, Com- Compton for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, you will be eating some carbs. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, what he does, he's gonna only give you like four ounces of protein or five, and then the rest is gonna be like three fifty, four hundred grams of carbs. He'll do that for like two days. But you're gonna feel hungrier. Even though it's all those carbs, so protein's yeah. not that much. Yeah, when I when I eat carbs, I get hungrier for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, Brett. Yeah. What's your biggest post show meal you've had? Achievement? You know, I've had edema before when I was younger, but I couldn't tell you what I ate. I've had it actually last like a whole week. Oof. Um, it was like not going away. Which I I was going to ask you, Justin, how long did your edema last? Uh yeah, a few days. It was squishy down there for a while. Yeah, yeah mine mine was like a, this one year. It would last like a week, and there was even like a festival going on across the street from my house, like a little this college or not college high school was having like a little fair thing, and I tried walking across the street, and I had to like sit down yeah. and like had to walk home because my feet hurt so bad. Yeah. Um, I don't remember too much of things I've eaten. Because in recent years, it's just been like Cheesecake Factory chicken and rice and I'm not weighing it out. But this past show, I went to All You Can Eat um, Korean Barbecue. Um, 
and I went to, it was called Jen. Oh, and yeah. this the gen that we went to is different than the one by our house just because you can get like more meats and with the meats you can get two rolls of sushi on top of that and with the two rolls of sushi you can get like two vegetables so i got like four meats it was like the thin slice shit and mm -hmm. then i forgot what that the hell that stuff's called um then we got two sushi rolls and then we got our vegetables and then i did another order of meats and every time I, when I eat uh, Korean barbecue, what I do is when I cook it, I put the meat and I get like rice paper and I wrap it into rice paper and I toss it in my mouth while I'm eating like a bowl of rice on the side at the same time. So I probably had like two, two and a half bowls of rice that night with like a whole stack of rice paper like this, that like at least. <laughs> um so I don't think that was too much. But then on our way back, we stopped at like this smoothie bar and I got a smoothie. And then from there, we went back to the hotel and I had like six crumble cookies right after that. That was about it. Oh, oh, calories cookies. All right, that, that's a lot. I'm like crumble cookies. Yeah, that's, that, <laughs> that's, quite, a, that's quite a bit. I mean, Brad, I would assume Brad had a good appetite because I'm sure you got to eat quite a bit in the off season. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right, let's do one more. One more. I don't think I really mind. Advice? Hmm. This might be a little too... A little too uh, emotional, maybe. Yeah. Oh, emotional. A little too deep right now. I don't want to go that deep. How often are y'all really monitoring y'all blood pressure and numbers... And what numbers would you be concerned by? Have we answered this one before? Yeah. We made a meme about that. Where you were like, Joe, you were like, Joe, probably done. Did you yeah, remember? That, you that's, that's, why, that's why I said yes. Because I can't <laughs> make fun of me. Oh, uh, okay. My bad. Let me see. We got another. Something better. How are you guys doing today? How How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing okay? <laughs> oh, bro, 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 you didn't even ask how, how my Texas trip was, man. Like, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was in Texas all week. Well, like, <laughs> uh, we're, we're your coach, right? Yeah, yeah. Going? I was training with Andrew Wait, all week. when did you train with uh, Carlos? Was that in Texas or was that here? No, no. I, that, that was weeks ago. That was like oh. four four weeks ago. That was in Jersey. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm behind. How did the trip yeah. go? Dude, it was good, man. It was good. Like, uh, you know, you guys know that I've been going through a, a midlife bodybuilding crisis with my training. So, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Andrew pretty much ran me through what he wants me to do, like, like training style wise and and the tempo and whatnot. It's essentially like a Dorian style. We went through the plan, like, dude, I haven't trained like that before, but I understand now what he meant. Like, really, I thought it was like a Nick Walker style, which I told you guys was. It was a little too slow for me, and I, I, I couldn't enjoy that. But it's more of a Dorian style, right? Like, like recruit all the muscles, you know, during could, the yeah. movement as much as you can, and then slow down, control the weight as you're as you're on the negative. So, um, rough week, bro. Like, I'm not gonna lie. We even did a we did a YouTube video for Animal while I was there doing legs. Like, dude, I'm not gonna lie, man. I, I'm I'm pretty ashamed of some of the weights I was using this week. Okay. But you know, it's kind of like you know when you start something new that you haven't experienced before like when you first started bodybuilding like kind of that first time like you hit the bench and your chest was really sore like that kind of the experience i got this week with literally everything so I, i've i've been so excited to train recently since i got back you know i hit chest today and dude it, it was just a great great fucking trip man like honestly like when someone invests that kind of time into you like i'm one of those people that we're all adults, right? If someone is going to invest that kind of time into you, uh, it has to count for something. You know what I mean? So publicly, you guys already know, but publicly, man, Andrew, I thank him. He's a great, he's a great fucking coach, man. Great fucking coach. Like I had a blast and I learned a lot. Like I really learned a lot this trip. So New York Pro is going to be interesting next year. It's going to be interesting if, if, We're if this plan you. pans out the way things go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you got pretty big, man. You got pretty fucking big. And uh, to be honest, I mean, you already looked big when you were a lot lighter. So 
that's yeah. that, that's gonna be really interesting. I mean, I, I I feel like your ceiling is really high, so it's gonna be fun to fun to watch what 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 transpires. Very exciting uh, future bodybuilding we got going. I, I mean, current as well, actually. Yeah, a lot of shit, yeah. a lot of shit going on. But uh, I was gonna say so. Okay, so yeah, we we were talking about the weights, bro. Honestly, bro, it's a bodybuilding contest, man. They judging your physique. Fuck yeah. it. Who who cares, bro? Who cares? We all gotta yeah, get to that uh, point that at, at some point we just like we trying to be better bodybuilders, man. Fuck it. It don't really yeah. matter. That's how I feel now. You know, I'm just like at this point, I'll do anything to improve. You know, like. It's a job From my now. training perspective, yeah, it's a job now. You know, the way I look at it, it's like, okay, if I've gone to this point now where this shit really matters, like from here on out, then I'm willing to put my pride and my ego to the floor and learn as I need to. Even if I need to start from scratch yeah. with certain concepts, I'm willing to do it. And with training, you know, we've talked about training so much on this pod you know how I trained before. This is completely foreign to my entire being, you know, as a human being. So it's like just getting to start this new side of things and, and learning this from scratch has been such an experience for me that I really, really think that if, if things go as planned, like I'm definitely going to improve. Like I'm definitely going to develop a lot quicker um, within this next last phases of my off season year so bro I'm, I'm excited man i i feel really good like dude i i even want to move to texas <laughs> i think I, I think i'm i'm convinced at this point that after we're done here with this with this lease i think i think i'm gonna move i'm gonna move over to texas like do better gyms we'll just, park. uh probably dallas dallas area yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Good bodybuilding community there. Like, dude, there's nothing here, man. Like, like exactly what Stu was talking about is exactly the same thing that I'm going through. It's just the bodybuilding community here, me, Carlos, Akeem, and that's it. I don't think there's 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 that many people left around here. You know, Justin don't talk to no one, Rodriguez. So it's like, bro, I I think uh, I'm convinced at this point. I, I feel happy. I, I'm just very happy this week. I just feel, I feel like I just unlocked a new level in bodybuilding uh this last week and i'm just so fucking excited man. well there's something to be said about surrounding yourself with people you want to be like you know so right i mean it, that's literally how i became pro i'm like if i want to be a pro i'm gonna go surround myself with pros and that's exactly. what happened literally within it, it was a short time frame but there was no fucking around right so you want to get somewhere get somewhere fast well go to the people that are gonna get you there exactly yeah well said. Well said. Well, I, I think that's a good good note to to wrap it up on. Yeah, I think yeah. That's a good note, sure. gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Um, time for me to go eat. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was good talking to you guys, man. Enjoy your right, yeah. I will. I will yeah. do. <laughs>